side. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Barry Michael here at uh, the Melbourne Pavilion alongside the legendary Mark the Hammer Castanini just before uh, what Mark has put on Warriors Way, a fantastic seven fight card of Muay Thai, kickboxing and boxing. The headline fight is Hunter Aoni versus River Daz. It's going to be a very exciting night of fights indeed. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the man himself that's put this together, Thanks. Mark the legendary Hammer. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Um, and I just want to, first of all, thank you for a great uh, intro, but also I want to thank everyone who's actually tuning in. Um, this show has been uh, a, real, a real challenge. Um, obviously, testing times in, in Melbourne in particular and all around Australia. Um, I want to just uh, give everyone a shout out that's doing it tough because I myself was one of those people and I thought, uh, what better way to challenge myself than trying to get an event on in this time. Um, a lot of gyms, you know, we live to train, we live to fight. We live for purpose, and, and for the last two years, we really had not, not a lot. So uh, I thought, let's try and make this happen. Um, and, and I want to thank everybody that's taking part in this show tonight. So the sponsors, please, that you see um, brought up during the broadcast, understand that they've really got behind the, the Australian fighting community, in particular here in Melbourne. The gyms, the great gyms that are taking part, the fighters that have maintained their motivation and training, um, and, and have really given their all to make this something special. Um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, as I said, it's given me purpose again. It, it, it motivated me to do something the last number of weeks. We've had obstacles and challenge after challenge, but I'm glad to be standing here. Uh, and many times I thought it wasn't going to happen. So I'm just ecstatic to be standing here, Barry, with, with a cracker main event ahead of us as, as well. Yes, let's talk, let's talk about this main event because I know Hunter Yoni quite well. I've uh, managed him for a little while, got a couple of his fights, and he's a huge puncher. Very courageous, had the fight of the year um, last year against Jacob NG. His last two opponents, both uh, uh, one was 14 and 0, no losses. He lost that one to Jacob NG, and it, then he fought uh, Yusuf Dib, also 13 and 0. So his last two fights have been against world-class contenders. Tonight he's fighting River Daz, who I honestly don't know a lot about, and I need Mark to tell me, <laughs> but it's going to be a cracker because Hunter Aoni can punch like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, well, well uh, a little bit about River Daz. Obviously, he's, he's 30 fights, uh, 30, 30 and 0. He's not been defeated. 30 and 0. Um, and, and pro boxing, is also had three pro boxing fights, two wins, one draw. So he goes into this fight undefeated. Obviously, I've, I've trained River. He's trained with me from, uh, from a young lad. And when we're making our, I suppose, entrance into big-time boxing, in, and, and we didn't want to, you know, I suppose, fight a mediocre opponent because there's no, there's no credit in that. And, we, you know, we thought, who's, who's the best? And, and, you know, we have to only pick from Melbourne fighters or yep. local fighters. <coughs> so, you know, we, we, uh, we thought of Hunter. He's an entertainer. He's got big bombing hands. Oh. We know that. Um, and, you know, River's also an entertaining fighter. He, he loves boxing. He's a Filipino, so he's got a Filipino background. Fight. So it's in the blood. Um, and we thought if we're going to give this boxing caper a try, 
Um, let's do it with class and let's do it against someone who's credible. So I think it's going to be an entertaining fight, Barry. Mate, a, honestly, a credit to you in this environment. It's been very tough for the, the last two years. But just to say, you know, your fighter, River Daz, he really has picked a tough opponent because Hunter, I mean, I've still jump in the ring and move around with the boys. Last year, I was actually going through punches with him. He hit me on my bicep and burst a blood vessel. It's never happened in 30 odd years of boxing. But this guy can punch, so he's incredibly dangerous in the opening opening couple of rounds. It's going to be a great fight, night of fights. Looking forward to it. Well, a, it we've got the main event. We've spoken a lot about that, but there's some. There's going to be some real entertainment I'm in, sure. in the lead up bouts. Muay Thai, some some uh, some great competitors in the Muay Thai, and also some boxing there for entertainment. So it's a good blended card. And we really hope you enjoy it, folks. And once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Credit to you, mate. Warrior's way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Melbourne Pavilion, the home of fights right here in Melbourne, Australia. Tonight, Warrior's War, Warrior's Way brings you Lockdown 2.0. The main event, as we just heard about, will be an epic, it'll be a cracker. We've got the Filipino Flash River Daz taking on King Hunter C2. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number one on the card, fighting out of the blue corner, Daniel Chan. And ladies and gentlemen, he's the opponent fighting out of the red corner, Jack Matthews. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your opening bout on the card, Warriors Way Lockdown 2.0. We want to welcome everyone watching around Australasia via the warriorsway.com.au website. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight, three by two minute rounds, full tie rules in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Vin Lee out of Honor Martial Arts with an official weight of 62 kilograms even. Tonight, he makes his pro Muay Thai debut, fighting out of Doncaster, ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Chan. And across the ring is his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, trained by Q Yekaset out of Wickham's Martial Arts. Last night of the weigh-in, he came in at 61.80 kilograms, one fight. One win, and fighting out of country Victoria, out of Kai Abram, ladies and gentlemen, he is Jack Matthews. Both fighters, Y Crew Ramoy. Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans watching around the world, we are here live. We are here live at Warriors Way, 
Lockdown 2. My name is Nicholas Murrah. It is a pleasure and honour to introduce Mr Barry Michael. Good evening, Barry. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Nick. It's a pleasure to be here alongside you at Ringside at uh, Warriors Way. And we also have our special guest here tonight, Mr Sai Naji Sensei. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Nick. It's great to be here. Uh, so happy to be able to watch some live Muay Thai and boxing again in Victoria. It's been a while. What an honour. Here we have the tail of the tape in the blue corner. Daniel Chen, age 27, 62 kilograms, and this is his pro debut. He's going to be taking it to Jack Matthews from Wickham's Martial Arts. Jack is 19 years old, 62 kilograms, one fight, one win. What can you tell us about these fighters, Sai? So Jack had his pro debut um, five weeks ago on our Roots show. Uh, really nice style. He's trained by Q Ekasak. Um, Q is an absolute legend of Muay Thai, um, and we love having him fighting and now he's producing some really great fighters um so jack's backed up real quickly five weeks later back in the ring after having i think he'd had five amateur fights before this um, and daniel making his debut all right, guys, we've been through the rules and what's expected now is some more instructions at all times defend yourselves at all times yeah touch gloves if you wish go back to corners good luck darren so and here we go We're into the first round of three by two minute. Three two minute round. So for the guys who are um, tuning in for the boxing and haven't seen Muay Thai before, the guys just seal the ring, which really? is a traditional thing to do. And they're having the Mong Cons removed by the cornerman. Um, and this is a three round fight. So a lot of Thai boxing fights tend to start up a little bit slower when they're over five by three. This is a three round fight. So expect action straight away, guys. Fair enough. Yes, yeah, should be exciting. A lot of personality there in uh, Jack Matthews. Okay, had him dancing around yep. before the fight. fight. And here we go, round one. This fight is brought to you by MA Legal. Oh, it's a great, uh, looks like a southpaw versus an orthodox too. So expecting to see a lot of back leg kicks coming through. So Daniel's already opened up with his um, rear leg body kicks. That's the main weapon you'll see. So he's shooting him up again. A couple, and uh, Jack's blocking and a good kick back. With dump and catch by Daniel. Oh, Lovely sweep there from Daniel Chen. Scoring early. He's got uh, nice high kicks. Good power there, Sai. He does, he does. And um, Jack's blocking a few of those pretty well, so he's pretty comfortable there blocking. Yeah, he's, um, he's very calm, Jack. Very cool. Yeah, for a young kid, I think he's only recently, you know, started uh, kind of taking Muay Thai a bit more seriously. He's very calm and focused. The boys are tied up in the clinch, so they'll work until it looks like a bit of a stalemate and then referee Mark Cook will jump in there and stop. Nice left knee, trade for right knee. They're still stop, working break. busy. Separate it, guys. Breaks Separate his it. posture down. Okay, step back. Point. So that first clinch of the fight's an interesting one. Guys will figure out who's more dominant in that and you'll see one guy will try to circle out, kick long and avoid it and the other guy will walk him down. So I think Jack's sort of appreciating that he's probably a little bit stronger in that position starting to walk down and daniel's shooting those back leg kicks support from his corner jack returns good good kick from jack matthews there good side kick. as you said uh sorry um jack matthews uh, daniel chin basically in the south force stand so he's probably a left hander i would think correct correct not necessarily, though, because a lot of them do switch. Yeah, yeah, between. true. And um, a lot of uh, Muay Thai right, fighters like can Step fight back. both ways. They do have a preferred uh, style. Um, you'll see a few of Daniel's kicks have already started to uh, redden up Jack's arm. So Time! Kicks on the arms do score in Thai boxing. So a shin across the forearms does tend to score. You haven't forgotten, have you? <laughs> <It's so hard. laughs> Here we go to the replay. Nice There's Daniel taking those rear leg kicks. A beautiful sweep there early on in the first round, scoring well. Jack returning the favour with those kicks. Big swing and a miss. And you see that when his kick got caught, he uh, rolled his knee in yeah, and, just down, that guy, and blocked it no, out. Cool. So, um, interesting. And yeah, I think he's definitely... Uh, Dominant right hander Jack, throwing that left hook right hand down the line. Yep, he's looking for the right hand against his, uh, you know, Southpaw opponent, which is probably the best punch you can throw 
Correct. So I think I'd say very much like traditional right, boxing where against the southpaw. Yep. Your right hand's the punch. The same in Thai boxing. For sure, Sai. Fight! Here we go to round two. Clean that uh, ice up, guys. This round is brought to you by Delexi Clothing. Jack taking the center of the ring. Good inside low kicks there by Jack, taking that front leg uh, out on Daniel. It's very calm for a young kid with only one fight, and Daniel's pro debut, man. Like He certainly is. Very some, calm. some of these guys um, only have two or three amateur fights before they turn professional in Thai boxing, not like boxing where you get guys with you know, 30, 40 amateurs. So being a third or fourth time in the ring in front of a crowd, being this composed, beautiful left hook by Jack. Yeah, very good left hook. Jack not taking a backward step, hunting down Daniel. Daniel ties him up into the clinch. And Matthews has been the aggressor most of the time. Correct, and it's, it's been um, effective aggression, so, you know, you can Stop, win break, fights break. moving backwards, yeah. um, but, what? in tie boxing, but, um, he's moving forward and being a good inside Stop. low kick. You called it early there, Sai. <laughs> Daniel breathing a little heavier. Staying busy in the clinch there, Daniel doing great, landing some knees. Those swinging knees to the side aren't really super powerful scoring knees. We'd really want to see those straight up knees down the line, but they're doing enough Stop, break. for Cookie to let the um, clinch go a little bit longer than normal, which is great. We have the second round of three rounds. Each round two minutes. Got to be close to the bell, I would reckon. Two minutes is a long time in there, though. Yeah, for sure. sure. There we go. It's a really good round, full of action. Both fighters looking so advanced for their uh, for their uh, records. Yeah, here we go to the replay. Coming from good gems and that left hand that blocked by Jack, and that inside low kick, just stopping uh, Daniel from being able to throw his uh, back straight down the line because his base is getting taken out. Sweeps away that kick. And no low kick return with a straight left down the line from Daniel. There they tie up. And there was that low kick, took him to his knees. Yeah, that inside low kick can be a bit risky, something because it's relatively easy to block, just turning the shin in. But if you can time it, especially as they're trying to step in to start, initiate their attack, it can take their base out. That's just the, that split second before their weight goes down on it and gets All right, kicked out, down. which is what happened there. Wipe the corner, please, guys. Centering. OK, the Centering. third and final round. Touch gloves, guys. Uh, what? This round is brought to you by Beast Chip. You are watching Warriors Way, lockdown two. Big thank you to Fox Sports. Undoubtedly a big thank you to Fox Sports in this environment. Wonderful to see. Daniel's looking comfortable in that clinch there, Si. He is. Um, I think that, uh, Jack was trying to get his elbows in. While that's happening, Daniel scored with a couple of, you know, smaller knees around the side. I think this is one of those fights that we really need to see a big last third round to get a deciding winner. Yeah, fair enough. Absolutely. Jack has been walking forward for the whole fight, but Daniel has not slouched for one moment there, Barry. No, it's been give and take all the way. But as you said, Jack Matthews walked up the majority of the fight. But, uh, oh, look at that lovely, lovely left kick. Yeah, those two left high kicks were, you know, in a close fight like this, they can be clinches. Yep. And there go, right. down again. Yeah, good job there by Daniel, just off balancing Jack. So Jack definitely needs to score big now. He needs to get a takedown of his own, a couple of knees in, solid knees, or a couple of big kicks to even this round up. Tying up in there. He's definitely got the better head and hand position, but he's just not really st scoring break, break. with it. Step back. Not much left in this three round battle, the first fight of the night. We've got Jack Matthews up against Daniel Chen. Both oh, these lovely fights. left step up knee by Jack. Yeah, very and simple. another knee going in there. Good, good, good knees for the third and final round. In there. Back into the clinch. 
Both fighters want it bad. Who's going to take it away? There's only seconds left. Jack straight back on the bike. Oh, he gets caught there. Some nice boxing there, Daniel. Ten seconds. Good punching back by Jack Matthews there. And the Great work by both. Great excellent, boys. excellent well fight from both boys. They both knew they had to have a good, strong third round to uh, clinch that fight. Um, Daniel definitely decided to score really well in that last round. Him in the last 10, 15 seconds, let go with some big hands. So it'd be interesting how the judges saw it. I certainly felt like, and here we go to the replay. There's those knees that you were talking about, Si. Jack trying to take him down. Can't quite do it. Nearly has him off balance. Nice body kick there from Daniel Chen. The knees in the clinch. And then that little take down there, which must have scored well. Yeah, like if, if, if the round is particularly close in all other sort of regards, that, that would be something that we'd be looking at. That left knee is a great left knee. That was a good, really good left knee. Yeah. I'm sure, that would have hurt. He did, the way he gets caught with that straight is that where he tried to replicate that with the back leg. Um, and that's one of the dangers is when you go long oh, knee. <laughs> Get a workout for a change. <laughs> so interested to see if Jack gets his second win or Daniel makes a successful pro debut. No losers in this fight. Both of them just so smart, so sharp, so measured and calm. I was really surprised. Like considering it's Daniel's first fight. Yeah. Definitely. Very, very uh, professional. Right, guys. Yeah, definitely. Very, that's a very good, good fight for that, guys. The one first up. Here we go to the judges' scorecard. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of full time rules, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your three judges have scored the contest 30 28, 29 28, and 29 28. Declaring your winner via unanimous points decision, Blue Corner, Daniel Chen. And there you have it, Daniel Chen in his pro debut coming away with a W. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think uh, especially that I, last round was the clincher for him. Yeah, so. I think definitely. Opening bout, Warriors Way 2.0 Lockdown Edition. You stepped in the center ring. Very impressive display to both you and your opponent. Congratulations on the win. Firstly, thanks, uh, oh, thank you, Hammer. It's an honor to be on Warriors Way. You got balls of steel, mate, for going through adversity and putting on this show. And that's the same for all the fighters who are about to step into the ring tonight. I uh, take my hat off to my opponent, Jack. I'm um, not going to lie, when Vin told me I was going to verse him, I was, I was very nervous because he's a walk forward style fighter. But thanks to my corner, thanks to everyone who was involved in my fight camp, this win will not be possible for, without you. Lastly, this win is dedicated to the Cassidy family. Tremaine Cassidy, rest in peace, brother. This victory was for you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Chen, your victor round. Bout number one. There you go, put that in front of you because that's what you
Ladies and gentlemen, bout number two on the card. This one brought to you by Warriors Way. Fighting out of the blue corner, Stephen Morales. Ladies and gentlemen, is his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Fraz the Don Monardin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is bout number two on the card, brought to you by Warriors Way. Three by two minute rounds, full tie rules in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Supernom, had a great heart and white tie, with an official weight of 61.50 kilograms. Three fights, one main, two losses, and fighting out of Raven Hall, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Morales! And across the ring is his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Philip Lay out of ACSA with an official weight of 61.30 kilograms. Two fights, one win, one draw, and fighting out of reservoir, he is Firaz the John Munadin. When the action begins, you're in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Mark Cook. Both fighters, Y Crew, Ramway. Here we go to the tail of the tape. Warriors way locked down to Steve Morales in the blue corner fighting out of Braveheart Jim. He is 27 years old at a weight of 62 and a half kilograms. Three fights. He has one win, two losses. He'll be looking to equalize that tonight against Feroz Muinadine. Feroz is 26 years old at 62 and a half kg. Two fights for one win and one draw. This is a very highly anticipated fight, Sainaji. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, very familiar with both these boys. They've um, Steve's had all three of his fights on Roots. Uh, he fought in the recent Roots promotion in September, getting his win. Fought a top boy from uh, Dominance Muay Thai. Faraz, big credit. He took this fight on Monday or, or Tuesday, I think. Regularly fights at 58, 59 kilos, so he's stepping up to 62 kilos. One win, one draw. He's also a guy I've seen fight a couple of times. Um, Kuwait's coming from great gym, so Phil Lay uh, out of AXA, preparing the boys really well, and uh, Super Nong. That over to the referee. Uh, through the rules and what's expected. Listen to my instructions at all times. Defend yourselves at all times. Touch cards if you wish. Go about your corners. Good luck. Shame. Yeah, Steve's got um, Super Nong in his corner. Uh, one of the resident expat Thai trainers, and um, if you ever want to see a left hook from hell, uh, Super Nong. I've seen so many. KOs from him in Australia and in Thailand off that left hook. It's just vicious. And um, if we could find Ready? someone at 51, Ready? 52 kilos from the fight in Melbourne, would be great. Here we go to the first of three rounds. Barry Michael, this is another Muay Thai fight, but again, we have uh, Southpaw. Southpaw versus Orthodox. And uh, Faraz opens with a big left kick and another left kick to the body. 
So he's going to be trying to utilize his speed. And you can see this um, strength and size difference there in the clinch. And of course, tactical. But Faraz will do well to stay at range. For a guy his weight is quite tall and he's got a beautiful left kick and uh, he, he'll want to be using that. Yeah, look, for our viewers out there, um, so I think you said 58 normally for Ros and, and 62, 62 and a half is uh, Steve Riley. So there's quite a bit of difference, really. Correct. And they, um, you know, they Steve actually ended up cutting a little bit more than what he was due to for his original opponent. So he came in on the 62. Um, and yeah, oh, and another dump. So a strong first round. But yeah, it's a big weight to come up at those sort of weights. You can see the physical strength difference. This opening minute or so of the first round. Nice back leg teep from Stephen Morales, getting it in there. Faraz just waiting a little bit too long for my liking. I'd like to see him shoot that left kick, throw it at the arms. Good high right kick by Steve, just blocked there by Faraz. Throws the kick, it gets caught, and he maintains his balance. So for the people watching at home, if you just catch a kick, it's not actually defense, because it still hurts you. If you catch it by taking the power away and then countering or dumping him to the ground, that's what you really want to try to achieve there. Good knees there in the clinch by Steve. Roz keeps moving forward. Yeah, he's looking for opening, but uh, he's being out punched and out kicked at the moment by uh, Morales. He's Time break. Definitely the stronger of the two, Steve Morales, in the opening round. Yeah, for sure. Then a um, couple of good uh, takedowns in the clinch from Steve. Uh, landed a couple of solid knees as well. Evades that high kick. That's a good scoring left kick there by Faraz, and a beautiful dump in the clinch by Steve. And attempted right to the body. A good punch again on the southpaw versus orthodox. And then just pushes him down to the ground again. And a nice high teep. That right to the chest, it did <laughs> land. It's, it's a great punch against the southpaw. It is, isn't it? Yes, definitely. There we go for the second sweep. Yeah. So this is where Faraz just managed to maintain his balance. Tried to counter that high kick with the low kick. He just has to be careful with it as he swung his arm down to get a bit more power on that low kick, exposing the um, All right, head position. Seconds out. Seconds out. Stay in the corner. Quickly, come on. Stay in the corner. Fight! And here we go. This is the second of three rounds. This round brought to you by Barry Plant in Manningham. Nice inside low kick by Faraz. Catches the kick, doesn't really do much with it there. Good left body kick there from Faraz. Yeah, good kick. Faraz looks like he's got a little bit more ferocity this round. Hopefully he can make something happen. He's certainly going to need to after that Stop, first right, round. Right. Nick, did you say ferocity or ferocity? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Warriors way, lockdown two, brought to you by Fox Sports. Lead hook, back leg kick by Faraz. Steve's just backing up and staying calm. Yeah, Faraz walking up more this round. Nice knee. Up. Good exchange of knees Stop, here break. in the clinch. Separate, save, separate. So start, break, smart strategy there by Steve. He landed a couple of knees and then put that knee guard on. Stop the action. So it stops uh, Faraz from landing his shots. Tries, a nice, tries an uppercut there, but fell short with a very difficult punch to land. Faraz. Steve's landing nice knees in the clinch here. Vicious shots. Yeah, he's definitely Stop, um, in, in the separate, clinch. Separate, in those swinging uh, break, knees right. to the flanks, he's definitely got the uh, bigger amount of power there. And as you can see, even with a couple of kicks that Faraz has landed, he started to uh, mark up Steven's ribs. So bruising on the body and damage is stuff that uh, Thai Stop, boxing break. judges look for. Impact, clean shots, landing on tar target. Volume's not as big a factor as clean shots landing and obviously damage so if you see a knee that lands and it they visibly uh flex that's a good shot nice low kick there from faraz nice little right good right hand Faraz. he's having a much better round. stop 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 hey, not separated barry almost with his height and his reach he'd, he'd be better off just not crashing in that range and just trying to Throw that uh, left hand down the line, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah, Ross. I, think, I, I think you're right, too. <laughs> there you go, second round down, which is brought to you 
Oh, good on you. Thanks, By Barry Plant, Manny Hammond. Here we go to the replay. So there you go, into the clinch. Good, strong Not knee knees, from Stephen. Yeah, for sure there, Nick. And um, he's being very smart, landing a couple of knees in and then just tying him up and blocking, locking until the referee comes and stops. And that, that comes from having a little bit more experience, having a, you know, a super nong in the corner. Um, the ties are just masters at how to score and nullify the counter. So how do you guys see it at the moment as we come into the third and final round? For me at the moment, um, it's uh, Steve's ahead. Okay. Steve in the blue corner, he's um, had a couple of dumps in the All clinch right, for me, out. he's landed the bigger knees. Yep. Seconds out. And Faraz has just Sorry. fallen short for a couple That's of his shots. Final step round. Back, step back. Fight! Faraz is going to have to bring everything he has. He's really going to have to step up yeah, here. Yeah. And he seems to have a lot of activity, but he's going to have to make it happen. There's only two minutes to get to the end of this fight. Beautiful flying knee there from... Good punches landed by both. And good punches and kicks landed by both fighters here. Yeah, uh, and another dump. And Love, St Steve oh, actually slid back a couple of times at the start of the round and caught him with that lead hand hook as um, Faraz was walking. That's another thing. You want Faraz to be careful. Aggression's good, but just be smart on how you do it. For sure. Got to be stop, effective. Break, break, stop, stop. Hey, stop. Don't hold the leg. Remember, two seconds. Okay. Stevie keeping distance. Faraz trying to find a spot. <laughs> nice yes. body kick there from Steve. Ooh. Nice knee from Faraz. Very good knee from Faraz. He needs to really do something, you know, land some really big bombs here in the third and final round. For sure. For me, he, he probably needs to um, drop Steve this round Stop, to break. even yeah. things up. Guys, yep. Steve breathing heavy there. Step back, take a couple of deep breaths. Big swings there from Steven, they don't land. Good kick, nice kick by Steven. Countered low kick by Faraz. Final 30 seconds. Here we go, 30 seconds to go. Don't all the ribs. Steve Stop, just it. lands another good no right words. knee around the side. Big thank you to Gasoline Alley for bringing this third round of the fight to us here at Warriors Way. Good knees from the boys, knee for knee. Great to see. I love watching a knee fight, and uh, Faraz has definitely got the right build at his way to be a good knee fighter. Walk up, grab on, and knee like the great... Uh, Baby kicks up. Tight! The great fight, Diesel Moe. Well done, well done. Good job by both the boys. Uh, shout out again to Faraz okay. taking this fight on short notice. Good left hook stepping back there by Steve, catching him coming in. Nice body kick there by Faraz. And another body kick just falls short. And a oh, beautiful jumping knee there, Stephen. Starting yeah. to have a bit of fun in the ring. And another dump. <laughs> oh, you old. certainly have to give it to Faraz for taking it on <laughs> short notice. And you know, also giving away a bit of weight as well. It's, uh, it's a big effort. He put up a good fight. Yeah, um, Phil Lai and the team at AXA, they're, um, they're a great team to work with and big supporters of all the shows. Yeah, yeah that was a lovely knee by... Uh, Perfect knee. Yeah, yeah, love to see a bit more of that from Faraz in his next fight. And yeah. I'm sure he will take a lot away from this. So, um, yeah, no Phil Lai and the AXA team, big shout out, guys. Big supporters of all the shows in Muay Thai. Um, you can rely on them to support good Thai boxing um, and the guys have their own MMA show coming up later this month uh, later next month in November so Bushido won so keep an eye out for that guys if you're into amateur and pro MMA the team at AXA All right, guys, give them some love it's going to come down to the judges scorecard and we'll go to fight, John uh, to uh, <laughs> Mr. Demick Oli in Tenerife Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your judges scored the contest 30 27, 30 27, and 29 28, declaring you in a via unanimous points decision to the blue corner, Stephen Morales. Sinaji calls it Stephen. Stephen. For the win. That was a really tough fight in centering. You are becoming a lockdown uh, fighter here. You fought only a few weeks ago on Warriors Way. You're back here tonight. 
Uh, and tonight you came over the win. Congratulations. Yes, uh, it's good to be here. But uh, before I say anything else, I'd like to give big props, big respect to my opponent who took this on three, four days' notice. He usually fights around 57, 58. So for him to come late in the camp and take the fight, Sedals. nothing but respect, and he deserves this as much as I do. Mate, well said. I'm sure your team behind you are very proud of you here tonight. Yeah, I couldn't do this. Braveheart, Roger, and I'm around everyone at the gym. It's been massive to keep training and privileged to keep going. And like Hammer said, this is a good opportunity for us to stay hungry. And in lockdown, you know, there's a bit of light with things like this. So thank you very much, Hammer, for having me on. And pleasure. Love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Morales, your winner of bout number two, Warriors Way Lockdown 2.0. Um, big shout out to Lionheart Muay Thai, Braveheart Muay Thai as well. The guys um, in center ring, they're also sponsors of the show. So they're putting a fighter and a sponsor on. So Braveheart Muay Thai, Super Nong, Roger and the team. How did the session make we you are. feel? Happy. Happy? Did it make you feel excited? Yes. High five. Good job. Today was a great experience, teaching everyone all basic stuff and putting it all together and having that we did it sort of moment, you know? Yeah, it was really fun. Bout number three on the card, fighting out of the blue corner, Nicola Stonewall Riccone. As a child, you would wait and watch from far away. But you always knew that you'd be the one to work while they all play. Ladies and gentlemen, her opponent fighting out of the red corner, Michelle Russell. Uh, this is life. This is life. This is what I know. This is what I know. So to me, so to me, this is life. This is life. One more road to cross. No, it's good to be. One more road to take. Gotta live my life. Get to know you. One more road to take. One more road to cross. One more. Gotta live my life like this one more move to me. 
I'm up at like 6 a.m. to check this nigga. You work the night shift, and I got to check the figures. Knock on his door, people talking about he ain't there. But the house is packed, shit. I know he here somewhere. See, money get high. I don't knock what a nigga do to get by. Just make sure you get by. Don't fuck with you get by. Ain't the first time he ran off, should've split his shit then. Ain't the think of what he didn't if I catch him slipping. Won't be an ass whipping. I can tell you that. I keep it real with this caddy going to sell two packs and run off. Ladies and gentlemen, this is bout number three on the card, Warrior's Way, Lockdown 2.0. Three by two minute rounds, full tie rolls in the junior featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trainer Matt Williams out of Bones Mixed Martial Arts. Last night of the weigh-in, her official weight, 55.10 kilograms. Four fights, one win, three losses, and fighting out of Geelong, Nicola Stonewall Rigoni. <laughs> Across the ring is her opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by Andy Colgrave and the team out of the ring gym with an official weight of 54.80 kilograms. Three fights, two wins, one loss, and fighting out of Braybrook, Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Russell! When the action begins, man, charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Mark Cook, both fighters, Y Crew, Ramoy. Here we have the third fight of the evening in the first female fight. We have Nicola Rigoni out of Bones MMA. She's 31 years of age, weight 55 kilograms, four fights, one win for three losses. Coming up against Michelle Russell. Michelle fights out of Ring Gym, ages 27 years of age, 55 kilograms, three fights for two wins and one loss. What can you tell us about these fighters, Si? So another two fighters I'm really familiar with. I haven't seen Nicola in the ring for a good five years. So I'm really happy to see her back in there, back in action. Uh, Michelle, uh, she's been fighting regularly in the last uh, year and a half. Um, so her last fight, I believe, was in uh, last uh, in, at the start of the year on Ultimate Promotions against one of, uh, but one of the other girls we're very familiar with, Jessica. Um, two wins, one loss. So she lost her last fight, but... Um, Michelle's been in fight camp since uh, April. She was due to fight on my show in May, which got postponed, and then postponement after postponement. And uh, I'm glad that she's actually made to, ma managed to get it in here. And um, yeah, stayed stay tough and went through all the weight cuts and everything. So great to see her. Um, and shout out to Andy Colgrave, her trainer that can't be here to tonight. And what's expected, go listen to my instructions at all times, defend yourselves at all times. Touch gloves if you wish, go back to corners, good luck. Three by two minute rounds here. So as Sai said, Barry, Michelle's had a bit of a rest. What can that do to a fighter if they take a bit of time off from the ring? Well, you know, it, it can get a bit stale and it is hard to, you know, you, nothing beats activity. You know, like a, a, a fighter who fights regularly is always harder to beat. When you're out of the ring, it's for quite a while. It's even over six months, it's more or less a comeback. But uh, saying that, Michelle Russell, I noticed there, she has got quite a bit in the red corner, quite a bit of a height and probably reach advantage here over Ready? her opponent, Nicola Brigoni. Fight! Yeah, here we go. So let's see what Nicole's, Nicola has been up to the last few years. Our first fight where it's uh, Orthodox versus Orthodox. Ooh. The kick just grazed the, the face of Nicola Brigoni. That's right kick. Nicola being clever, stepping back and kicking, and now Michelle's just started to fire up. A couple of big kicks to the body, a teep. And definitely, there's a massive height advantage there. Just trying to work Nicola back into the corner there. Yeah, Nicola looking to counter. Good high kick there by uh, by Michelle there in, in, in center ring. Nicola wants to start holding those hands a little bit high for my liking, because I, I, I wouldn't want to see a left hook right kick coming up. We saw one of those last night against the great Georgia Petrosian from Superbon and. Uh, it did not end well. It did it. not end well, and we like Nicola. We like George Jones. We do. We like Superbump better. <laughs> low kick for low kick exchange there. Very calm start for the girls. Um, I'm glad to see Nicola's not uh, being overwhelmed by being back in centering after such a long break. Five, six years. I think oh. her last fight was on Chris Bradford's uh, prestige show. Big shout out to the big man himself, AK47, Chris Bradford. Can't wait to see you back in the ring, man. Oh, nice straight left hand from Michelle. 
Yeah, good handwork by both girls here. So, um, Michelle's got uh, Springs here, Melbourne's favourite Muay Thai fighter and everyone's favourite person in the corner. And Jack Jenkins, um, one of uh, Melbourne and Australia's best MMA fighters there, substituting for the great uh, Andy UFC Colgrave. Michelle's got some heavy kicks. Time! Lovely left jab there by uh, Michelle there, Barry. Yeah, look, she's good with her hands. I mean, very good indeed. And as, as we said, she's got quite a bit of a reach advantage as well. Okay. Exchanging lower kicks there, other ladies. That kick there by uh, Michelle was just caught by Nicola, but Michelle just pulled her leg out, just sneaked it out really, really well. Um, that's going to be the shots Ooh. for her, those long straights and the body kicks. Good, good counter, great shots there from Nicole there. Got caught, got caught by a counter there. Great replay action there. What we want to start seeing a little bit in the next round is one of the big things in tie boxing is payback. So if you make them miss the kick, you kick back right, straight away. Up. If you block the kick, you kick back. So the judges are looking at an exchange. So if I kick you and you block, but you don't kick back, mm, if you block and kick back, that's very good. That's yeah, what we want to see them doing. And certainly we want to see more action. This is only a three round fight. The girls are straight into it. Ooh. Nice knee there. Good knee, good knee back as well. Michelle's showing a lot of power. Certainly has the height advantage, like you said, Barry. Yeah, she's possibly a bit, you know, physically stronger as well. And, and both, both girls going at it in close there. Yeah, and from memory, Nicola used to be um, just, I think she was probably uh, fighting at a uh, one division lower, but it's quite normal for fighters after they've been out for a long break. <laughs> for sure. To come in back and just slowly work their way back down. And I actually think she's good at this weight and, you know, she can be comfortable, just get another fight in. Oh, great right knee there by Michelle as she came in. Those knees to the body, kicks to the body. Not only do they score, but they start to pay dividends the next round in taking the cardio out of your opponent. And just saw a sneaking right crossing elbow from Michelle over the top as well, yep. just for a good measure. Big right hand there from Michelle. Again, with that right kick, the left side, the left flank of, uh, of Nicola is looking very red there. Yeah, those kicks have found a home. That was a, a third elbow Michelle's oh. gone for, which is again, uh, against a slightly shorter opponent who's trying to come in and punch the elbows that that's the trick elbows and knees put the fear into them of getting hurt and uh, make them more tentative with their punches good work there by michelle michelle sneaking that right hand in and, and catching nicola yep. quite often there barry very good with the right hand good and knees oh yeah. two good two three good knees in a row and another knee she's she's found a home for that back into the clinch Michelle's being very hard in the clinch. Nick, Nicholas returning them. Nice body kick. Stop, stop, stop. No, hold on too long there. What? Nice kick there from uh, Nicola. Time. That, that round certainly had a lot more action. That flew by. It did. I think Michelle found her um, found her rhythm there uh, with that body kick and those knees. She, I think she landed three or four in a row. Um, and again, with her height advantage in this in a fight that's definitely the trick to go with um ash is coming in good right kick good and there's right an elbow right, you'll yeah. see earlier too great combinations beautiful high kick there from michelle beautiful knee to the body Ooh, oh that oh, there's that elbow. elbow yeah crashing look at that wow and again and right here Michelle just seems to be firing a little bit quicker than uh, Nicola here, guys. Yep. yep. Yeah, well, um, Nicola at times is having to either walk right, in to close out. the range or she's just moving Get off uh, Michelle's attack and going but, but, into the longer one. shot. So. The third third step back. And final round. When she comes right. in, she eats the knees and the elbows, and when she moves out, she eats the body kicks. So she's in a bit of a hard position at the moment. Tell me she's going to be full. <laughs> We want to thank uh, Life Build and the Tree Range Arborists for bringing this round to you. You're watching 
Warriors way, lockdown two on Fox Sports. Big shout out to Johnny Biscuits McKenna and Mich uh, Michaela from uh, Tree Range Arborist. Uh, everyone remembers Johnny McKenna, one of our favorite Victorian fighters, and now running a great business and getting behind uh, behind the show tonight. Yeah, he does amazing work. Uh, if you follow him on Facebook, he's uh, a bit of an eco warrior taking care of the Arbury of, uh, of Victoria. Good right hand to the body, left hook upstairs from uh, Nicola there earlier on. Oh, left hook right hand down the line from Michelle. Very accurate shots indeed. How do you rate the um, the Muay Thai fighters' hand so far tonight, Barry? Yeah, no, it looks some very impressive. You know, seeing uh, a bit of everything, to be honest. But uh, Michelle Russell here is, is he really impressed me with her hand. Yeah, she's and her elbow. really comfortable. Great, great, great with the elbows as well. For sure, for sure. Nicola's really got to start walking her down and hope to get some big shots in there, try to get a couple of counts. But I think, as I said earlier, those knees have started to really wear on her cardio. Yep. Take, would be taken. Final 30 seconds. She's looking really fatigued here. You're right. She's yeah. slowed right down. And Michelle's just picking her apart. She is. Not Win a lot of spring in her step there is Nicola Rigoni. Win or lose, I'm really happy to see Nicola back in action. She's um, really used to w love watching her fight, and I'm glad she's back in, and I hope this is just the first step back in. Yeah, good to see. Only a few seconds out. Stop. And it's all over. Don't hold too long. Okay, well, good fight, girls. All smiles around. I love seeing fighters enjoying their fight in uh, in the ring. It uh, makes makes the whole promoting thing a lot more worthwhile when Absolutely. you see people loving it and enjoying and having a good experience. It such doesn't respect. ever, you know, win, lose, or draw as long as you put up a great fight. And such respect between these great fighters. There's that knee that really uh, took a lot of the gas out of Nicholas oh. Tank. Hey. Oh, that was uh, that was the two punches of the fight for me. The left hook, right hand. Yeah, very good. He's going to make Chris Junior do some work. Doctor for Spades won't hurt him. Just oh, the just firing off so quickly. Good man, yet yeah. tough. There it is, the big takedown there from Michelle. Nicola had really run out of puff by now. Yeah. Those jabs really started to rock her head back. All right, centering yep. girls. Precision centering. shots. Good we fight. will go to the fight, judges' wow. scorecard. Over to John Debacoli. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the contest. 30-27, declaring winner via unanimous points decision. Red corner, Michelle Russell. There you go, well done. For sure, a well-earned uh, decision there for. Um, Michelle. Great to have Nicola Rigoni back in centering after a long break. Michelle, congratulations. What a fight. You had some great combinations there. You impressed the people on commentary. That was a very, very nice display in centering. Thank you. That was probably the first time I fought and really felt what I was doing in the ring and it felt so good. Um, it took so much <laughs> effort over this last week to get in this ring. So to get the win, I don't have my coach here. Um, and I know Nicola. She's been working really hard since, you know, May. So, Your turn. Okay. Uh, hats off to her. She's done such a good job to get here too. Um, thank you so much, Hannah, for having this this awesome event. Um, Congratulations, well done, ladies and gentlemen. Victor of bout number three, Michelle Russell. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What a fantastic uh, third Thanks, fight of the night. Michelle Russell taking away the win. Really good hands, great knees. What did you think, Barry? Yeah, look, it was a you know quality display by Michelle Russell, but uh, good to see Nicola Rigoni. You know, as she said, get back in the ring uh, for quite a while out there, and she, you know she gave away a bit of height and reach. And, but uh, yeah, look, it was an impressive yeah, fight well, indeed. I used to do a lot of fucking wrestling. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Don't say much. Can get some <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, bout number four. Fighting out of the blue corner, Hoshi Rumble Frederick. Go to the tail of the tape, Mr. Barry Michael. Yeah, here we've got uh, Nick Hannafy and uh, Hoshi and Frank Frederick. Uh, Hannafy 25, Frederick 27, 85 kilograms. So Hoshi's making his boxing debut. He's had six MMA fights with six wins. And Nick Hannafy, what a legend, man. I've known this guy for a very long time. He's always around the beast team helping the fighters. He's had two wins, two losses, and one draw. This fight's at 85 kilos. Beast Jim, Big Hannafy, what a bunch of absolute legends. Supporting, sponsoring the event and putting fighters on. And ladies and gentlemen, he's opponent fighting out of the red corner, Mick Hannafy. Watching the world go round World go, yeah, world go round Listening To unfamiliar feelings and unknown sounds Unknown sounds, unknown sounds Slipping through my fingertips so here comes the big Hannity from Beast Gym, put the pen, having his make sixth uh, boxing fight after a long layoff. Hoshi Frederick from Kings now. MMA, trained by Sama Jahanara, boxing debut, but six MMA fights. So, no slouch, um, and he's used to fighting in much smaller gloves. So, let's see how he goes, um, I think a crack at boxing. Yeah, actually the gloves look rather big, to be honest. Both boys having their boxing debut. Ladies and gentlemen, this is bout number four on the card. Four fights nights brought to you by Warriors Way. Four by three minute rounds. Boxing rules in the super light heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Sama Jahanara out of King's MMA with an official weight of 85.20 kilograms wearing the black trunks. And fighting out of Bayswater, ladies and gentlemen, Hoshi Rumble Frederick! And across the ring is his opponent fighting out of the red corner, trained by John Bowman, out of the Beast Fight Club, with an official weight of 84.60 kilograms, wearing their black trunks with white beast and blazon across the front. Five fights, two wins, one draw. Fighting out of Chelsea Heights, ladies and gentlemen, Mick Hannafy. When the action begins, your man in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Alan McCall. Okay, boys, we went over the rules in the dressing room, okay? I want a clean fight with no holding and hitting, all right? Punches no lower than the belly button, all right? Because your belt's a bit too high. Punches on the belt are fine. Okay, but I want I don't want this coming any higher, all right? Yep. When I say break, stop punching and step back cleanly. Okay? Defend yourselves now. Obey what I say at all times. Touch gloves. Back to corners. Good luck. And okay. here we go, the first boxing fight of the night. Michael Hadafi up Hanin, against Hoshi Friedrich. Time. Hoshi Friedrich got a lot of height and reach here against his shorter opponent. Mick rushes right out to the middle of the ring. Hoshi a little bit more measured. I think Hoshi caught him straight away because uh, Mick Hannafy acknowledged that he was caught, I think. Might have caught him in the eye. Hoshi's already starting to switch stance, so he's gone south or back to orthodox. Um, with uh, MMA, obviously, the guys tend to do that a little bit more, much like the Thai boxing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty common in boxing too, especially these days. You see it a lot more, the fighters that switch a lot. But, you know, I mean, <clears throat> from the Southpaw stance, for an orthodox fighter, if you don't know how to fight him, it can be very confusing indeed. And uh, Hoshi there is fighting from the Southpaw stance at the moment. Um, Mick Hannafy needs to step to his left as he's doing that and drive his right hand either to the midsection or straight to the chin and come over the left hook. He tried the left hook there but missed. And uh, Hoshi looking dominant here in the opening minute of the first round, putting the pressure on. 
Mix evading well, but uh, he doesn't seem to have an answer just yet. Still trying to work out what Hashi's doing. Yes, he's, he's got the height and the reach, and from that south force stance, which he's, uh, I think, he's majority of the time he's going to fight from this good jab there from Hashi Frederick. So he's tried to change back into that orthodox stance, and Mick Mick's definitely going to be hunting with that <laughs> overhand right, isn't he? Yeah, he, he needs to. He's just tried it there. Hoshi's talking a lot to Mick, too. Yeah, very confident in this opening round. And what what kind of a difference does that make when, <laughs> when you're in there, Barry? When someone speaks you up. Yeah. I, I learned early, you know, fought a lot of experienced guys and had a couple of talk to me, and the first time it happens, it's a shock. <laughs> from then on, I used to talk to my opponents all the time. <laughs> Lester Ellis said to me, if he, 15 rounds, he said he, 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 if he fought again, he'd wear earplug. <laughs> I still remember that you did not <laughs> shut up for the whole... But with uh, all due respect, you did not stop for the whole fight. Oh, don't worry. He started it right at the start. <laughs> oh, that uh, overhand just missed the mark for... Just, uh, just grazed the chin. Ooh. Would be good to see Mick maybe put a couple of jabs behind before that uh, overhand right, before he throws it in, just to get into that range a little bit. Yeah, undoubtedly. He, but he needs to close the fight up. He's, he's giving uh, he's given Hoshi Frederick too much, you know, too much reach and, you know, too much distance. He needs to take the fight up to be shorter. He's nuggeter, nuggetier. He needs to get up on, on top. But easier said than done. And this is the first of four rounds, so look, Mick does have some time. Yep. We are oh, he's caught. He's hurt there. That hurt him. That left hand was a good shot. Oh, she's looking very confident here. You're watching Warriors Way live on Fox Sports. Nice, nice jab there, nice counters. Big thank you to MA Legal for bringing this round Time. to us. Yeah, so good opening round for Hoshi Frederick. He undoubtedly got the points in that round. And he certainly seems to have adapted well from MMA into, into the uh, into boxing there. Side, so we get into the replay and then you see Hoshi smiling at Nick. Just almost toying with him a little bit. Yes, certainly taunting him. You know, frustrating when you've got an opponent that's evasive that lands shots and moves on you, especially from the South Force dance. Um, Mick needs to walk walk him down, just get up up on top. And there's no use trying to fight him from a distance like that. He's just going to waste. And nothing takes more out of him than missing punches, as you guys know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think he's just going against the south ball with the reach advantage. Ooh. It's a bit of a struggle for him, and he's just sitting Only at the end of Hoshi's punches, isn't he? Ring. Yeah, he, is. that, he was badly hurt there by that left left cross. Lovely left cross from the south force stand. Well, there are three rounds for Mick to out. make it right. He looks very... His eyes look very clear. We know that he's got the, uh, the staying power. Round two. Big smile from Hoshi. Yeah, very confident indeed. Back into the south pole stands by Hoshi Frederick. I think the corner listened a little bit at the start of that round to Barry and started to push forward a little bit, but it's kind of... Back on the back foot now. But going back on the back yeah. foot, sitting on the ropes again, trying to hunt that shot. Yeah, he can't let Hoshi dictate which he's doing. It's a bit like uh, Anthony Joshua when he fought uh, Usyk. He let him dictate the whole fight. And, you know, he was the biggest, stronger guy, and he, did not, he didn't, didn't use his advantages where... Mick needs to use his strength because he's nuggety and strong. He needs to get up on top of his opponent. No, he's not going to. He's not going to win the fight from the distance. That's for sure. Unless he lands a cracker, of course, which can happen any time, as we know. Nice jabs there from Hoshi. Hoshi's oh, just being very smart at keeping his range and not coming to that range. And if Mick's going to sit there, unfortunately, throwing pot shots off his back foot, it's just not going to get there. No. Nah. Not going to do the trick, that's for sure. Big thank you to Icon Commercial for bringing the second round to you of the first boxing round of the night at Warriors Way. Yeah, Icon doing a lot of great work with um, the video work for Warriors Way and Hammers Gym. Um, and obviously this this uh, show, another short notice event, and they've put out a lot of great content for um, Warriors Way. So big shout out. Oh, she's dictating the fight, like you said, Barry. He's dictating what happens, where it happens, and when it happens. Definitely, and he's, talk he's talking to, to Mick all the time, which would be frustrating. And he's, he's on the back foot there. He's getting nailed. Mick looking for an answer. As I said, he's got a... It's useless throwing punches like that. He needs to close the distance and force his opponent back. Maybe even, you know, grab him, turn, try to turn him into a corner. Get physical. 
I've watched boxing so much these days where it's it's more like fencing. It's a lot so much in the amateurs too. They don't know how to fight in close. They don't body punch much at all. It's it's a, it's a lost art for a lot of uh, you know a lot of countries in the world and a lot of trainers to be honest. What's the back of the head? Nice words from the sage, Mick, Mr. Barry the Michael. Head, okay? Mick hopping those punches from uh, from Hoshi Friedrich. Yes, he's being ticked off. He's not landing with his own counters. He's, uh, as I said, distance. He's just see that look, just, and that's that's going to take more out of him. And um, Hoshi is getting a lot more confident, putting a lot more behind his shots, and just maintaining his range, just coming in and out where he wants to be. You wouldn't think that it's Hoshi's first boxing match. I mean, sure, he's, uh, you know, an esteemed MMA fighter, but uh, almost putting on a bit of a master class here. Yeah, boxing well. You know, <coughs> very good from the Time. southpaw stance, and we saw he can change to orthodox when it suits him as well, but another big round to Mick Hannafin. Mm. Sorry to um, Hoshi. Hoshi. And a big hello to uh, one of um, Melbourne and Australia's best referees and boxing coaches, Bryce Birtwistle. No doubt he'll be watching the show. G'day. Good on you, Bryce. Here we go into the second round replay. And that, that jab just keeping Mick at distance. Yeah, you know, using his, his reach well and he's uh, just dictating the pace of the fight, stepping back when he wants to. And His shots and, uh, are just so snappy, Barry. Yeah, and Mick Hannafy's just punching from out of the distance. He, look, look at that. That's He needs to get up close. This is round three, isn't it? What could he do here, Si? Three what could he yeah. do to bring this back? He's, he, he's obviously lost the second round. I'd say he's lost the first. Well, like, like Barry said, he, he needs to, obviously, we have the expert second right here, but he needs to use his feet and use his jab to get in closer, throw his punches on the way in and get in, in and start working and staying yeah. at the end of those shots. Okay. He's not going to beat a left-hander with longer reach. Exactly. Flat up against the ropes, unfortunately, for exactly. him. No, he needs to. He needs to sh get right on top of his opponent, and it's uh, you know it's probably easier said than done against a very classy opponent in Hoshi. He's picking his punches really well. But this is the third of four rounds. Mick really needs to do something here. Yes, he does. He, yeah. He, I mean, he's got some power. You can see that. He's he's, he's strong. He's nuggety, but he needs to use that. And, you know, bully his opponent, get him in the corner, try and keep him there and maybe go to the body and then come up to the head. Does he just eat a shot or two and then get on the inside? Well, you know, he, he walks Barry? in with his hands up and, 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 you know, cuts his opponent off, works him into the corner. The, you know, because it's a shorter man. Once he's got him in the corner, he, sh he should have the advantage with his shorter arm. And it's uh, funny to notice, as soon as um, Hoshi switches back to orthodox, Mick gets a bit more comfortable with walking him down. And as soon yep. as he goes back to southpaw, it's he's like, lost. yeah, he's lost and he's yep. back again. True. Yeah, he's being picked off, Mick. I want to say thank you to Personal Support Systems, one of the sponsors here tonight at Warriors Way Lockdown 2. You are watching a lockdown event in COVID on Fox Sports. Thank you to Hammers Jim and Mark Castanini for making this happen. Goodness knows that the fight world needs it. Good, good boxing there from Hoshi. Just picking Hanapi off. Look, he's been extremely confident indeed here. Barry, was that an alley shuffle? Yeah, but was that an attempt at an alley shuffle? Sort of an alley shuffle, yeah. I think it was, I think it was a Hoshi Frederick shuffle. <laughs> There that's, you go. That's now what he go. needs to do. Now he needs to stay there. He needs to stay there and force his opponent back while he's up close. He's still got... Oh, oh, oh great goes. counter. He's out. This will be over. He's, Three, he's hurt. Four, five, We six, haven't got long left in the round, seven, though. Eight. Can four, Mick four, three, make it? This way. Can he come okay, back? You ready? Has go? he still got fuel in the You're tank? Right? Got up. He's nodding yes. Fox. I don't know. The spirit's willing. I don't know about the body, Barry. No, he's he was badly hurt. There can't be a lot left in this round, I don't think. But uh, let's see if Hoshi takes advantage. Yes, he's... Oh, he's starting to pull him apart. Only a couple of good clean shots that probably do it. Yeah, Alan McCall's having a really good clear, close look at this as well. Yes. Yes, Mick, you're taking the best ones. Hoshi Ooh. very confident. Yes, sir. Right hand. Come on, Mick, move! 
Yep, there we go. Seconds the, out. Going to get through the round. Good credit to him to recover. He's pretty badly hurt. Time. What a show of spirit there from Mick. And if he should do it, should, certainly showed some heart. And, you know, he was badly hurt. He got up. He got through the round. He needs a knockout in the last round, to be honest. Otherwise, he loses the fight unanimously. Here we go to the replay, Barry. There's, this, there's the shuffle. That was a bit of a spirit attack there from Mick, and then he backed up again, and I think that... That's the shot. Yeah, yeah. the backhand hook, lead hand hook combo. And the right hook, yeah. Yeah, he was badly hurt. Credit to him to recover from that. For um, any of you it's guys who round, yeah. aren't familiar with the Beast Gym, none of their fighters round, will guys. ever stop. Either the referee has to count them out or the final bell's got to go. Round, guys. Yep. There's the no giving these guys. Good on them. Both fighters touch gloves. This is the fourth and final round. Okay, box. It's going to be interesting to see what Mick can pull out. He's certainly fatigued. He's losing on points. He was knocked down in the third round. He needs a knockout. And uh, I think it's unlikely Hoshi Frederick is looking dominant the whole way through. Boxing very well. Big thank you to CCM Insurance for bringing this round to you. Hoshi just doing a good job of just keeping him where he wants to be, attacking when he needs to, and just stepping out of range. Wouldn't mind seeing Hoshi go to the body a little bit too. Yeah. Some longer shots there, just bring those hands down. Yep, that, that you know, from the south to stance, good right, beautiful right hook. The left drive, oh, and lovely jab. You know, if he followed with the left straight to the body after his jab, it's a very debilitating shot straight to the heart. Yeah, speaking of Usyk and Joshua, that was one of the punches Usyk landed really. Uh, quite at will the first three rounds, especially. Yes. He's a great, uh, great boxing IQ, Alex Alexander Usyk, that's for sure. One of the heavyweight world champions. And Hoshi Frederick showing great boxing IQ here too. He is. He knows exactly where to be, what to do, and when to do it. Big oh, swing and miss there, and that's really been the story of this fight. That big looping right, just not landing. Yeah, look, he's got power, Mick. You can see that. He's tough, but he just needs to shorten that distance up. Mick Tibbet to come forward. He's been picked apart these three rounds. Knocked down at the end of the third. Now we're in the fourth round. Can he take away a knockout? I don't think he'll be able to do it, but... He certainly has the power for it. He's smiling. He's still in the fight. Well, you know, showed a lot of heart to come back from that, you know, bad knockdown in round three. He was badly hurt. And, and this has probably been his most aggressive round, Barry, after yeah. that uh, third yeah. round. Uh, uh, I'd imagine uh, Bowie in the corner and... Uh, Would have said, you've got to get out there and try yeah. and a big one. There's no mincing words in that corner. No. no John Bowman does a great job. Final 30 seconds. Those steam jabs coming from Hoshi. Yeah, just dominant with his jab. Dominant with his uh, boxing IQ. A brave McCannafy day. Taking everything that's come his way. It's still smiling. Yeah, tough as nails. Yeah, tough boy. Don't slap me. Time! Well done, guys. Good clean fight. Well done. Great effort. Great boxing debut by Hoshi there, taking his first uh, pro boxing fight against a more, uh, ex more experienced uh, boxer. Nice little left there. Yeah. But there it is, that stinging jab. The jab was a dominant weapon right the way through the fight. Hardly missed one of them. Yeah. And just made him question everything that he did, did Hoshi Frederick. Yep. Well, you know, the left jab or the right jab, I mean, it can win a fight for you, you know, if you're, if you're good with it and you know how to use I'm it. I'm not a piece sure. of me. <laughs> There's that jab. 
have again. Did you, um, sorry, this is work has popped into my head. Did you actually get in touch with Rachel? No. That's the question everybody wants to know. Yes, Here we get in touch with Rachel. <laughs> We'll have to wait and find out. <laughs> We're also going to have to find out what the score is from, <laughs> from the judges' scorecards. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you're watching Warriors Way Lockdown 2 coming to you live on Fox Sports. What a fantastic night it's been so far. This is the first boxing fight of the evening. I'm here... Courtesy of our sponsor Rachel, we're here with side, we're here with side, we're here with side Naji and with Barry Michael having a cracker night, gents. Um, just looking over at Mick, uh, I've known Mick for a lot of years, and obviously Bowie. It's hard to see him, uh, obviously this hard, and I hope, I hope that this is, uh, this doesn't put him off fighting again, and he just goes back in the gym. He's got a great team behind him, and they work on the stuff they need to do to, to get back in and have another crack. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just that. Awkward, taller, left-handed yeah. fighter. That switch stance was just a bit hard for him to figure back out. You couldn't get a tougher opponent than a switch hitting the tall southpaw. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your three judges score the contest. 40-35, 40-35, and 40-35. Declaring you in a via unanimous points decision. Blue corner, Hoshi Frederick. Yep. A victorious professional debut to boxing. No surprises there, for sure. Hoshi, great foray into the boxing world after your MMA career. How did it feel with a new style? And um, you fought against one tough man in Mick Hannafy. The beast, Jim, never quit. And uh, he showed a lot of intestinal fortitude in that ring here tonight. They, uh, they certainly brought it today. Um, I was very, very nervous to fight Mick, uh, obviously, because he's a, he's a powerhouse. So I knew he was going to wing those shots. I was just, uh, I was really happy to get in here and have a performance like that. Like you say, it's my first fight in boxing. Um, and I don't know. I think I did pretty damn good, guys. What do you reckon? Um, <laughs> As you said, after MMA, it's not after my MMA career, it's during my MMA career. I'm coming back. None of you welterweights are safe. So I'll get maybe none of you middleweights are safe either. I'm going back, but I think I might stick around in boxing a little bit. This was fun. Um, can I say my thank yous? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to say thank you to my gym back home. Uh, Kings, we've been closed for the better part of two years. You people are amazing. You give me such strength. But this one's for my family. Yes, Amy. Zach, Chloe, we needed a win. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your victor, Hoshi Frederick. We're going to take ourselves a five minute intermission. We'll be back with the main card right here on Warriors Way Lockdown 2.0.
Here we go to the tail of the tape. We have Matthew Walker from Ring Gym. Age 25, 63 and a half kg. Eight fights, one win with seven losses. And Romeo Appine, who is fighting at the age of 29 for 63 and a half kg. This is his boxing day view. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number five on the card, Warriors Way, we are live, fighting out of the blue corner, he is the pocket size pit bull, Romeo Hapines Jr. Pencil. I scribble the stands that as my hands are trembling. Great seven made heaven out of words. I began to build a world that only I inhabit. I gotta have it. I'm rapping about tragic. I think I'm just passing it. Trying to stay the way while in the dark. Hope I ain't crashing it. Now my little hobby turned to cash. Now thinking about who I be if I listen to doubt. Said I'd never do it. Well, look at me now. Young girl, oh dream, oh soul, oh dear. Plan B, plan well. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, fighting out of the right corner, he is the Murray Mauler. Matthew Walker! The purple hat, cheetah print dancing on the people, rolled up happy after joint dancing, dancing on the people, people dancing on the people, I got people on the people, people dancing on the people, with the people on the people, smoking CO2, see me see you dancing on the people, climb up on the booth, hanging from the people, on the people, my head is the roof, dancing on the ceiling, on the people, I got people on the people, dancing, dancing on the people, I got purple hat, cheetah print dancing on the people, rolled up happy after joint dancing, dancing on the people. Your following contest is brought to you by Warriors Way. Four by three minute rounds, boxing rules in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Trained by Stephen Darren Hancock out of Stand Up Fitness and Lars Tui out of Young Bulls Gym with an official weight of 63 kilograms even. Ready, black trunks with white. Two fights, one win, one draw. Fighting out of Hampton Park. He is the pocket size pit bull, Romeo Apines Jr. And across the ring is his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, trained by Andy Colgrave and the team out of the ring gym, with an official weight 63.30 kilograms, wearing the black trunks with red. Eight fights and fighting out of Sunshine North, he is the Murray Mauler, Matthew Walker. The man in charge in the centre of the ring, Mr. Alan McCall. Okay, boys, we went over the rules in the dressing room, okay? Can you stand up for a sec? So this is, this guard's a bit high, so punches on the belt line are okay, all right? His, you can't punch on his belt line, understood? Okay, because his is the right height. Defend yourselves at all times. When I say break, stop punching and step back, okay? I want a clean fight and I obey what I say at all times. Touch gloves now, back to your corner. Good luck. Matt, you got your mouth guard? Romeo, got your mouth cut? Okay. Time in. Fox. Very interesting uh, ring, you know, um, meeting there. R Romeo at times looking very, you know, distant indeed. <laughs> he certainly was, uh, was, was, you know, just a different person there at ringside. And well, he, uh, he's giving up a fair bit of height and he wants oh, to, seemingly wants to give up a bit more. He's yeah, it was, right over. it was crouching down and it was kind of weird, but... Uh, the referee there, Alan McColl, was a bit bewildered himself, I think. It's a uh, yeah, massive reach advantage to the red corner, to Matthew Walker. Yeah, Matthew Walker's got the experience uh, advantage. Um, eight fights. Romeo having his first fight. Good to see my uh, my first trainer, uh, Laos Tui, in the corner there of um, Romeo. Romeo's uh, just the one fight. Um, and at five foot one, he's giving a bit of height, but I'm sure he's got a... Much like Tui, he's got power in those legs and arms. I'm sure. Mate, his thighs are uh, thick as my waist. 
Uh, we just want to say a quick thank you to Eden Electrical, E-D-O-N. Eden Electrical, thank you for bringing this round of this second boxing match to us here at Warriors Way. You are watching live on Fox Sports. You know, this is the perfect example of a much shorter opponent uh, in Ro Romeo or Pines against uh, Matthew Walker. Romeo needs to, you know, he's doing a good job already at the moment making his opponent miss, but he needs to score. He needs to get up close against his, much, his opponent with a much longer reach indeed. Good body shot there. Nice jab to the, bo the body. He seems very confident, Barry. Very <laughs> confident indeed. I mean, he's, look, he's, looking, he's not even looking at his opponent half the time, which would be frustrating. Matt's definitely an experienced guy, though. He's had, um, outside of his eight boxing fights, he's had a bunch of amateur uh, Muay Thai kickboxing fights That's as great. well, I believe. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, Romeo seems super confident in there, so hopefully he can back it up. Small there from Matthew. Yeah. Matthew needs to use that jab, get that jab working. I don't think he's feeling too threatened at the moment, is Matthew? No. Well, Romeo is, you know, really having a look at his opponent this opening round, I think. Yeah, and if we know one thing about the boys coming out of stand-up fitness is uh, once they decide to go, they go. Um, they've got a lot of... Um, they train very explosively and they're always going out hunting for the big finish, so... I think he's taking his first round to just check his opponent out, yep. get a bit of a read on him, and then start to explode as we go. Nice upper cut there from Matthew. Yeah, Matthew looking quite confident this opening round. Good jab, lovely Fine. jab there to finish the round. Good opening round from these fighters. Yeah, well, Matthew Walker, he used his reach well towards the end of the round in particular. Uh, Ro Romeo of Pines was a good jab there. But, you know, he was evasive and he's sort of sussing his opponent out, I think. It's uh, good to see boxing and Muay Thai live from the pavilion coming back onto uh, Fox Sports. And uh, let's hope that this is the start of a lot more uh, a lot more Warriors Way action. You know, I think it's, it's great for Fox Sports to, to put this sort of thing on. You know, basically you've got different styles of martial arts, boxing is a martial arts, Muay Thai, you know, kickboxing. It's, it's wonderful to see and congratulations to Fox Sports for, for putting this on indeed. Just having a chat to Matt in the back room, he seems like out. a really Seconds relaxed like floor and move guy, off, just guys. really loves fighting. Uh, fan of all combat sports and uh, uh, interested to see what he does going forward. Yep. Well, he's got that you know, incredible reach advantage. He needs to <coughs> exploit it, keep his op shorter opponent at distance if he can, and just pick him off. Like that. Really give him a lot of uh, height here. Isn't he? Oh, Romeo just grazed his opponent with a big right hand there. Matt's just uh, bringing that left hand back down a little bit too low after yeah. he lost those jabs out. And we know what the game plan for the shorter guy is, so got to get those hands back to where they need to be. Barry, when you're, when you're punching down, does that take more power, less power? Well, it's hard to punch down. It's, it's, it's harder to time your punches when you're punching down, to be honest. Harder to, hit, harder to hit your target. <coughs> Probably doesn't uh, detract from your power, but it is, it's is—it's—it's much harder to time. And then the inverse is punching up harder. Punching it up is easier. I've, I've, well, I've always found punching up easier. I've, I've dead said never like fighting. A, and, you know, I'm a short guy anyway, but and most of my opponents, mu huge majority, were, mu were much taller than me, and I prefer that indeed. I didn't like fighting shorter opponents. <laughs> Here we go, not, not that many were. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of head movement there from Romeo. Matthew trying to pick him apart. Yeah, but he did nothing, did he, Romeo? He needs to throw some counters and land some shots. Yeah, at the moment, he's kind of got all the moves, but uh, the substance isn't quite there of the damaging shots back. Yep. You don't win a, you don't win a fight just being defensive. <laughs> yeah, looking good. I think Matthew's enjoying himself. He's got a bit of a grin on his face. Look. Wouldn't mind seeing a uh, 
sneaky little uppercut from Matt as uh, Romeo's putting his head down there and charging in. Yep, that'll be a good shot against the nuggety opponent. Romeo's certainly not looking away this round. Laser focus. Barry, is Romeo just starting to give the rounds away by his um, sort of his inactivity in offense? Is yes. he just yes. looking I, too good and not really scoring the round? Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. He's, you know, looking around and looking away and looking quite often he's not when he does look at his opponent he sees the shot pretty well but half the time he's you know sort of somewhere else i think and he's certainly not winning what's that <laughs> something different That's good good right hand over the top and another good right hand from romeo romeo still coming forward Time. Mm. That's the end of round two. Yeah, He's well, I, I think it's another round of Matthew Walker, to be honest. He landed the majority of the scoring shots. He got caught a couple of good shots at the end of the round, like that one. Unofficially, that tee shot, good. That right hand over the top is a good shot, but uh, sort of grave didn't land flush. Top of the head there. Look, it looks like he's grinning all the time. And he seems to be enjoying himself. Yeah, he but I, I don't think he feels too threatened. No. No, I was in the back, actually. <laughs> Had to wrap Matty's hands for him, uh, for Andy Colgrave, and just chatting to him. It was like, we just caught up for a coffee. That's what I remember two years ago, catching up for coffees with people felt like, but it felt like I just caught up with a catch up with a coffee for him mid-morning for a <laughs> casual chat. Didn't seem like Second he was count. too stressed about getting out there and fighting. No, he Come on, guys. doesn't appear stressed at all. And did well there in that exchange of punches, where Romeo's, Box. you know, didn't even counter. Big thank you to MJ's Hideout, Mexican food. Delicious food, MJ's Hideout, bringing this round to you here at Warriors Way. That was a good stiff jab from Romeo. Yeah, he just slipped outside of Matt's jab and landed that jab through. Mm. He rocked his head back a little bit. Did. Needs a lot more, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got support there. Yeah, Romeo's starting to land. That was a good right hand. He's very open for that overhand right. Yeah, he's starting to apply a bit more pressure, throw a few more punches. He certainly needs to if he's going to represent here tonight. Yes. Far too defensive in those few rounds that uh, open up this fight. Yeah, he had a, quite a bit of success the first part of this round. He needs to continue it. Romeo, times. good stiff jab from Romeo again. Walking up more aggressively. For, probably been told in the corner that he's it's slipping away and he's not doing enough, which is what he needs to be told. Matthew doesn't seem perturbed. I mean, he's getting, you know, he does get caught with a good shot here and there. Barry, but he doesn't yep. look like it's taking anything out, any uh, spring out of his step. No, he's still grinning, still enjoying himself up there, and as I said, the majority of the time he's using his reach well. Look at that, good, good work, good right hand over the top. Yeah, it's good to see him finishing off with his left hand a little bit after when he throws some of those rights. He's actually putting his hook behind it too, um, Matt. Matt's staying at range. Look at Romeo, this is... Oh, strange. He switched off again. It was uh, <laughs> a bit more success. He needs to really continue his you know, aggression and, and tip, pin Matthew in the corner and really let go. And that Matthew is using the ring well and has been using his reach pretty effectively as well. Right, step back clean. Romeo disengages, walks yeah. away. Yeah, it's strange. Looks, not even looking at his opponent. Nah, look, he's walked around, it's like he's somewhere else. <laughs> Good little right hand from Romeo there. Definitely his um, best round of the night so far. Yes, it is. But it's not enough. But considering the first two rounds, he almost didn't throw any shots. It's, uh, it's not saying a lot. Puts his hands down. Yeah. What's yeah. he thinking? 
He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to knock him out in the fourth round if he's yeah. gonna behave like this. And Matt's being smart. He started to uh, throw those right hands a little bit rounder because uh, Romeo was starting to slip the straight, so he started to throw him around a little bit and had a bit more success with them. Yeah, Matthew very happy with himself as he walked back to the corner. Very confident indeed. Here we go to the replay, Barry. Yep. There's he's holding his holding Romeo at bay with his long left hand. There's a good overhand right grazing shot though, and he wins. Usually if you if you know you hit an opponent and he smiles, you know you've hurt him. At least you've landed. And again he's grinning, enjoying himself up there. Good jab. Matthew with his moves. Lovely jab there. Romeo chasing but not landing. There's the jab again. Big right hand, doesn't quite land flush. Yeah, just clipped in. That, that was a good one. That was a second time. Second that was a nice guy. overhand right But fighters, touch gloves. This is the fourth and final round. All right, touch gloves, guys. Touch gloves. Look okay. at this. Box. Romeo finds, and certainly, I think, my unofficial card, and I think probably you guys needs a knockout. Yeah, he definitely needs a really strong round, at least or a knockout, or at least knockout. get an eight count. Yeah. yeah, knockdown for sure. Big thank you to Riddler's Gym for bringing this uh, fourth final round of this fight to you. Massive shout out to Darren the Riddler Reese, one of Australia's greatest, if not the greatest, Muay Thai trainer in Australia. Oh, oh. and Kaylee Reese, uh, former women's WMC world champion and CrossFit star. Five, it was on the end of yeah, a punch. Yeah, it was, it was the end of a punch, it was true. He was hey, off balance, but it is a, technically a knockdown. That will give him the round 10 eight. he was on the end of a yeah. punch. Yeah, it's definitely Fox. not what he needed, is it, Barry? So he's really going to have to start firing up. I think it's, uh, yeah. I don't think there's much he can do other than one punch knockout, which he's probably got the power. He just put good shots there. He's, he's landing big punches now. Romeo. And Matt shouldn't be engaging him too much now, start. Should just be using that reach, trying to you know be safety first here and just tick his opponent off, stay away and jab. Jab and run. Wide open when he goes back. Oh, Matthew there. Good pressure, true, but too little, too late perhaps. Matt does have a, actually a semi-decent uh, turning left hook, just he gets it sometimes off the rope. Yep. No, he does some good things. He just he's a little bit open Don't on that hold. side for especially against a shorter opponent with, for an overhand right. It seems pretty easy to hit with that right hand. Mm. Yeah, good pressure, but not enough scoring shots. Going out, good pressure. He loses his balance there. Going backwards, good little, little uppercut he tries. Can't be too much longer this round. Uh, you know, Romeo's probably winning this round, perhaps. But it's, uh, probably too little, too late. Yeah, and that knockdown definitely uh, oh, yeah, has made course. his life really hard, and of someone's course. bleeding. Yeah, good left hook there from Romeo. Would you be telling Matt in the uh, from the corner? Thirty seconds. Barry to try to just try to steal a little bit of time by holding two in the clinches until the ref breaks them up, just to start stealing a little bit of a few to, few of these remaining seconds. Yeah, look, he's still got. I think he's still got plenty left in his gas tank, though. He's still yeah. looks going, throwing some good shots there. Beautiful, nice right uppercut. Eh? Yeah, very good timing. Now he's still got plenty in the gas tank, and he's he's making the majority of those right hands miss. Did get caught with a few, but. Uh, Romeo finishing well, but oh, got caught with a big left hook there. Thank you, but, yep, he's very confident indeed. And there you have it, Matthew already celebrating. Yeah, and on our unofficial cards, rightly so. I know, um, yeah, it was Steve a... Hancock and the boys in the corner aren't happy with that knockdown, but end of the day, it did just graze him. It did, but he was... Uh, off balance and it went down, but he was hit. You know? Yeah. So, it's like, you know, technically, I suppose it is a knockdown. I've seen it happen a lot. It's unfortunate sometimes. And look, I don't know if all judges are 
are, uh, have to give it 10-8, they might, you know, they might not see it that way. Yeah. Did, um, Barry, other than the knockdown, how did you see that round? Did you think it, it was a winning round for Romeo? Do you think it was a lot, he started, yeah. yeah, a lot closer for sure. He, he, yeah, he might have nearly pinched it. He had his best round by far, but uh, Matthew's got it. Like, yeah, he got the water getting there. But, uh, there it is, yeah, that right hand. Grazing right hand as he was off balance and hit the deck. Unfortunately, I think Romeo made it a bit easy for uh, Matt on that knockdown to earn it, but to get it, he didn't really have to earn it. Yeah. Just on body language, Romeo, I've seen, seen the thing he's won the fight. Uh, I would be very surprised if he gets it, but you know, we, we have seen some crazy decisions at times, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen here tonight. You know, there could be, it's incredible. I watched the fight on, <laughs> on uh, TV a week or so ago, and one judge had a nine points one way and one nine points the other way. I mean, it's just crazy. It's, people, judges on different sides of the ring can see two totally different fights. Yeah, for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your three judges score the contest, 39-36, 38-38, and 39-36. Declaring you in a via majority points decision, red corner, the Murray Mauler, Matthew Walker. Yeah, one judge had a draw. Yeah, I mean, unless they didn't score that knockdown and gave the last two rounds to uh, Romeo. Possibly. Possibly fine, but you know, very happy. Um, Matty there. and Will Owens. That was a tough fight in centering. You were up against uh, Romeo Apine's um, good effort. Uh, fight number nine, centering in this lockdown event. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, it was a good fight. It was a you know tough, smaller fella. Like I was, I cut a lot of weight, put a lot of weight back on, and I was just you know wasn't able to phase me. You know, I was yeah, a bit stronger, a bit sharper. The boys at the gym would be pretty proud, mate. Yeah, I reckon they're, they're all at home watching the fights. Uh, apart from a few in the corner, it's, uh, we were supposed to have a few more boys fighting tonight, but unfortunately with the current situation, they weren't able to. That's what you get. We all, we all love to fight, and we're just glad to be here putting on a show. Mate, congratulations. Uh, a very good winner. Well done, mate. Thank you. Good job, man. No surprises there. We have Matthew Walker taking away the majority decision point win. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the only surprise there was that Romeo was frustrated and disappointed with the officials, whereas yeah. I think his what he did in the first two rounds, he can only be frustrated with himself. For sure. For mine. He's a, obviously a capable guy, but yeah. if you don't throw punches, you can't win rounds. That's it.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is your semi main event of the evening. Fighting out of the blue corner, Tim Davies. Better know. <laughs> <laughs> Your windows, close your doors, get your smalls, huh, yeah. <laughs> my man Imp left a tech and a nine at my crib. Turned himself in, he had to do a bid. A one to three, he be home the end of 93. I'm ready to get this paper, G. You with me, mother right? My pockets looking kind of tight. And I'm stressed, yo, Biggie, let me get the vest. No need for that, just grab the... Gat, the first pocket that's fat, the tech is to his back. Word is born, I'ma smoke him. Yo, don't fake no moves. What? Treat it like And ladies and gentlemen, he's opponent fighting out of the red corner, the British Bulldog, Adam Copeland. I try to bury myself in this music, but I've been putting my head in the sand. Now I've got my head in my hands, and I feel like I'm ready to dance. Like I'm ready to do my thing, only got one shot, now let me just load one into the sling. Let it off, make a daft cunt look like a ding, and it's not over to the fat last sing. So just let me do my thing. I've been trying to find my voice. I wish it was a choice. Feel like I'm in a battle from time, when I shot them fly down the right hand side. Now I'm really just trying to find this vibe. Yeah. I'm trying to do my thing You will not find a man that's my twin One of a kind and I'm just minding My own business never stop rhyming I'm just waiting for the right timing And right state of mind that I'm in Don't speak if you want to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, your following contest is a semi Main event of the evening All fights tonight brought to you by Warriors Way Three by three minute rounds Full tie rolls in the super middleweight division Introducing first, Freddy out of the blue corner, trained by Matt Ball out of the smack gym with an official weight of 75.90 kilograms. Seven fights, three wins, one win coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Karam Downs, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Davies. And across the ring is his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, trained by John Bowman out of the Beast Fight Club. An official weight. 75.80 kilograms, three fights, two wins, one loss. Fighting out of Bond Beach, he is the British Bulldog, Adam Copeland. When the action begins, you're in charge in the center of the ring, Mr. Mark Cook, both fighters, white crew, Ramoy. So back to our Muay Thai bouts for the evening. A super middleweight bout between Adam Copeland from Beast Gym. Three fights, two wins, one loss, one big KO. And Tim Davies, 31 years old from Smack Gym. Uh, seven fights, three wins, four losses. Uh, Tim, young guy, I've seen him fight quite a few times. Um, good style. And uh, I'm really glad to see him back in action. Adam, I know his uh, last fight was a win on the Ultimate Promotions. And uh, he's coming out, and I know he wants to put on a show. He's a kid that's really keen to um, establish his name. Um, and, uh, yeah, two great gyms, two gyms that are at every show in Melbourne, Thai boxing gyms, uh, Beast Gym and Smack Gym with the one and only Matt Ball. At all times, touch gloves if you wish, go back to your corners, good luck. And here we go to the semi-main event of the evening. You are watching Warriors Way Lockdown 2. Thank you to Fox Sports for bringing this to you live from the Melbourne Pavilion in Kensington. Ready? Key for Tim this fight, fight is not to get into a big heavy hand exchanges. Stay long, kick long to the body, stay composed. And obviously uh, Adam's going to put the pressure on. Coming from a gym with really strong hands, he, he's going to be getting in there trying to get the big shots off. Straight into the clinch. A bit of a nothing clinch at the moment. No, yeah, no, the nothing really land scoring. And the referee will have to step in and <coughs> break him up shortly. Yeah. Can't let that go on for too long. Big thank you to Gasoline Alley for bringing this round to you. Good right drive to the body there from Tim Davis. 
Uh, sorry, from uh, Adam Copley. Yeah, and Timmy just fired back with that right hand over the top. But, yeah, you can see um, Adam's kind of got a head hunting with those hands. Yeah, tried the elbow there too. Oh, beautiful, beautiful elbow. elbow. Wow, that was vicious. Back into the clinch. Ooh. Tries a reverse spinning elbow, doesn't land. Nice little knee there from Adam. Yes. Stop. Break. Look, looking dangerous in this opening minute. What? Adam lowering his weight there in the clinch there, Si. Yeah, he is. And um, in that position, when you're trying to not get need, you want to get your hips in closer, shut down the space. And then when you want to do exactly what he did, create some space with his hips and then drove his left knee down the middle again. Nice little right body shot there from Adam. Tim I'll tell you, his corner will be screaming at him not to do that again because when you're in the clinch, don't be punching. Control the arms, control the head, and let your knees do the work. Ooh. The elbow again. Nice low kick there from Adam. Good shin kick. Tim, if Tim's going to go into the clinch, he really needs to do something. He can't just stand there wrestling. He needs to take a shot. Yeah, his um, clinch work at the moment for me, Nick, is more reactionary. It's not something he really wants, but I think it's uh, as Adam breaks his range, he just basically instinctively goes in it. And now he's in a couple of big right Watch elbows. Yep. They've got to take their toll. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> left, left knee to the body. Surprise, Cookie's actually letting these clinches go quite long. Right Stop. kick gets caught and a right hand Stop. counter. Don't hold the leg for so long. Okay. Go. Ten seconds for the first round. Low kick that bow you like, the high kick. Time! Good guys, guys Adam Copeland. End of round one. Strong, strong first round for Adam Copeland. I think uh, Tim just struggled to get his game plan going there. He's just Sorry, reacting right, a little bit that. too late. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah, he was caught by. <coughs> so that was a nice right to the body. Go, good boy. counter there, but he's caught by a couple of good crashing overhand right elbows. There, well, look at that. Yeah, he's uh, quite lucky not to end up with a cut there, Tim, from oh. those and another right elbow. For sure. That again. I would have been bleed by now, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> To crack jokes and say, my eyes got so bad when the referee was giving instructions, I'd start bleeding. <laughs> All right, second up. Stay in your corner. <laughs> Come on, boys, hurry up. Had about 300 stitches over him, plastic surgery twice. 300? Yeah. At least. Holy moly. What? That's a record. Mm. Here we go into the second round. Adam's coming out strong. He really, he, he goes, he's going out for a stoppage. Yes, he is. I think you're dead right. He's got the power too. A good left knee. Applying a lot of power there is Adam Copeland. Yeah, Tim Davies looking pretty um, under the weather here at the moment, I think. Yeah, and that right elbow across the top and the left knee to the body's landed a few times. Good catch and counter. <laughs> Great, two great right hands. Oh, like good counter. Yeah, left uppercut right hand back there from Tim. It still surprises me there's still ropes getting pulled in tie boxing. I thought those things were <laughs> gone in the 90s, but apparently not. Keep it working, guys. Left elbow. Good evasion by Tim, who at times in centre of the ring looks a lot like Australia's super middleweight king, Toby the Weapon Smith. In the face, not in the clinch. Adam is looking so strong, just picks Tim up and walks him into the corner. Yeah. And then starts having his way with him. Left hook, right elbow there from uh, Adam too. Yeah, Tim, Tim had a good right hand of his own, but just, uh, he just Keep fired straight back at him, Copeland. And I hope you're enjoying this Muay Thai action when you're watching at home on Fox Sports. 
Uh, something a little bit different from the boxing bouts. Definitely, but it's look, it's, it's oh, stop, I love watching stop. it's quality right. stuff, and <coughs> you can see a bit of everything. You know, a bit of good boxing, you know, great leg work and defense, and you know, you, it's got everything basically. That's just the leg That's size it, for the go. sweep, Two doesn't seconds. quite make it. Good counter right hand though by Tim. It's oh. a body kick on the vicious arms body and kick. elbow, yeah. It was a great left, left body kick. The right side of Tim Davis's body. Tim's starting to get a little bit confident with that right hand. He's thrown it a couple of times and it's landed for him. Yep, he needs to do it more. Big knee there. An important thing when you're in the clinch is posture. If your head and your posture gets broken down, you lose your power, obviously, and you're open for those power knees. So it's really important where your hips are and where your feet are in the clinch. You don't get pulled Come down on, and you lose your position. Yep. Another left knee, You've got to be careful pulling your head out like that. That hurt that left knee to the right side. Yeah, Tim dropped, he, dropped his arm as yep. he walked away. Took a big breath and then engaged again. Yep. Knee guard on. Stop! End of the round. End of round number two. Really strong round there for Adam. Tim did, did, didn't get uh, lose his confidence. Did come back with some shots when head hunting. I think he knows he knows he needs to stop him. Yeah. One one more round to do it. Only three rounds. This one three by three. Beautiful straight rights there. Yes. And again the knees. There's the left. There's the right left. Good counter there. Yep. Tim Tim's having his moments, but uh, not enough. Nice low kick. Tim certainly has the skill to take it, but uh, he really has to step up to this third and final round. Yep. One of the things um, <clears throat> Thai boxing judges look for, which uh, establishes the foundation for your attacks, is uh, balance. So Tim is just right, not, not balanced on when he's throwing his shots when he's moving back. If you're not balanced and composed, close, close. touch gloves. This touch is gloves. Third step and back, final guys. Round. Step back. You can't block and kick effectively. Fight. So yep. he just needs to get his balance better. Make sure his feet aren't coming together when he's coming forward. Ooh. Thank you to Revolt Fight Gear for bringing this round to you live on Fox Sports. You're watching Warriors Way. Good opening here for Tim Davis. Landed three right hands so far. Right crosses. Tim knows he's going to have to take it in this round if he's going to take it at all. Yep. Yeah, and uh, really, I mean, that's for him to win. He has to knock out, and the punches are the key to it. Another overhand right there. Yes, he's landed four. Five good right hands this, this round so far. The third and final round. Three three-minute rounds. Nice knee. And again. Yeah, he's starting to get a little bit more comfortable. That's oh about where we want the ref to break it. Adam's doing a great job. Keeps pushing forward. Stop. Stop, stop. Separate. Separate. What? Beautiful low kick there from Adam. It's a right hand for his measure, for his uh, troubles. Come on, I'm working. Yeah, Tim's Stop, got to get out of that corner. Probably about a minute, just over a minute remaining in the third and final round. Yeah, and um, Adam's just being a bit of a wet blanket on him at this, at this yeah. stage. Smothering him, sort of. Knows he's in front. Throws, goes for that right elbow, crossing right elbow again. Good dump. Gloves, gloves. Wipe them. Could those points make the different side? Yeah, look, I think this is definitely Tim's round so far. Yeah, good, far, far good, better good, round. Yeah, good body kick as well. Now trying to just pull the head and turn out off that Work corner. I'd like to Stop, see this round, this fight go five rounds. Step back, step back. Yeah, and I, I just think some of those clinches when the action dies and there's a knee guard on and the boys start pushing, they should just separate them and let go. Oh, that right hand, Rothenberry. That was a bomb. That was a, probably the best right hand of the fight from Tim Davies. Yeah, that was a good shot. All the action here live on Fox Sports. Warriors way locked down to. Thank you. 
And Tim's starting to see those right elbows coming again. Tries to catch the low kick and come back with the right hand. Adam's just fighting hard to the end, not giving it up at all. Uh, Adam's left eye underneath getting pretty marked up. Mm. We're coming down to the final Stop, seconds break. of the third and final round. Active, guys. In our semi-main event, 10 seconds to go. There's nothing left in it. Time! Good fight, guys. And it's all well, over. Good fight. Good finish there by Tim. Adam had a very strong first two rounds, and yeah, uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see how the judges score this one. Yeah, look at that beautiful overhand, right? The spray flies off his head. Just evading that hey, low Johnny. kick and coming back with a right hand to just fall short. Right knee to the body. Those elbows, Adam went looking for him all throughout the fight. I'm surprised he didn't actually end up Cutting Tim there with those. Another good right hand. Yeah, lucky. And a dump there in the clinch. Strong right kick. Lovely work. And that was a shot, wasn't it, Barry? Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that one, too. Great. A couple of great right hands. <laughs> Been pretty happy. All right, center in, guys. Good to see Dylan Walker in the corner with uh, no worries. my man, Matt Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your three judges score the contest 30 28. 29-28 and 30-27. Declaring you in a via unanimous points decision. Red corner, the British Bulldog, Adam Copeland. Well-deserved win for Adam. Got taking his record to three wins, one loss. And Tim Davies, will, he'll be back. He'll be back. He'll come back stronger and better. He had an excellent third round. Adam will grab a quick word. Semi-main event. On lockdown, 2.0 Warriors way. How's training been? How did you go? Congratulations on the win. How do you feel? <laughs> Thanks, mate. First yeah, two um, crackers. <laughs> well, lucky training's been pretty normal because of obviously it's been professional. He's got a work permit, but it's a lot of work for the people in the gym to take time out of their, their evenings. Obviously, it's 24 hour equipment. I couldn't have done it without the, without the team. And my girlfriend at home, Holly, she's a huge supporter. And all my friends in England and all my people in Australia watching from home. I'm really grateful to have everyone around me and to be here in general. Mate, great fight. You uh, had the edge there and you, the, the points uh, showed at the end. Yeah, I was uh, winning to get a big elbow. I mean, they feel mint to throw him. Like, it was good fun, but couldn't get a knockout. But Tim's a tough guy. It was a great fight. Caught me with a few good shots, rang my bell a few times, but it's what it's all about, isn't it? It's good fun. Mate, the win went to you. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Your victor of the semi-main event, Adam Copeland.
Here we have the tail of the tape. River Daz from Hammers Gym, 28 years old, 63 and a half kilos, three fights, two wins, one decision in his boxing career up against Hunter Ioni coming out of Beast Gym. Hunter is 11 fights for eight wins, two losses and one draw. Hunter does know how to knock out. He certainly does. He's a very big puncher indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Fighting out of the blue corner, King Hunter Sito. Yeah, well, have a look at Hunter here dancing. He loves this dancing as he comes to the centre of the ring. I, I remember when he fought Jacob NG last year. The entrance was incredible from both fighters, and Hunter loves. He's very loves this. He's very flamboyant. Certainly puts on a show for the crowd. That's for sure. Yeah, and another one thing, uh, uh, Jacob NG and his next opponent, F. Jacob, was actually a Muay Thai fighter to begin with. Very accomplished Thai boxer before moving into boxing and being one of Australia's more promising uh, super lightweights, Barry. Yeah, look, he's the tallest super lightweight in the world, I think. Or I think they actually fought it. They actually fought it lightweight. He, he made, yeah. Both of them made lightweight for that fight. Hunter's fighting 63 and a half for this. But yeah, Jacob NG showed me he's got everything. He can punch, he can box. And after the knockdown in the first round, he's got a great chin. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, the Filipino Flash, River Daz. And here comes River Daz, a name Muay Thai fans and kickboxing fans around Australia and the world will be very familiar with. Undefeated in Muay Thai and kickboxing, 31 fights, 30 wins, one draw. Fought in glory overseas, fought on uh, Warriors Way in Rebellion most of his career here, uh, fought in Lion Fight, and he's had three professional boxing fights and is undefeated. Wow, that's an impressive record indeed, with the, the Muay Thai background, that's amazing. Yeah, and his, um, his uh, one drawn bout was against Shady, who's uh, a very accomplished and tough boxer. So I know Shady well. He's a, he's a brilliant boxer. His record doesn't do him justice. He's a brilliant technician indeed. And uh, he only, again, fought Muay Thai five weeks ago, and uh, he's backed it up in a boxing fight against a really, really dangerous opponent with that uh, sleeping pills in his hands. For sure, but, you know, that's a credit to him. He's, he's undoubtedly fight fit, you know. Um, if you can fight regularly, it's, you, you can take fights on short notice. Ladies and gentlemen, both Warriors have now entered the ring and this is the main event of the evening. Tonight's fights are brought to you under the watchful eye of the Professional Boxing and Combat Sports Board of Victoria. Your judges at ringside are Andrew Campbell, Matthew Tyne and Mark Cook. Your doctor is Dr. Chris Barnes. Your timekeeper is Mr. Chris Anderson Jr. And when that bell tolls, the man in charge in the center of the ring is Alan McCall. Tonight's fights are brought to you by Warriors Way. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody watching at home on Fox Sports Network, let's bring the noise. It's main event. Time! Six by three minute rounds. Boxing rules in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Johnny Bowman and the team out of the Beast Fight Club. An official weight 63.30 kilograms. Running a black trunks with gold and white. He's had 11 fights, eight wins, one draw. Five wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Keysborough. Ladies and gentlemen, he is King Hunter C2. 
And across the ring is his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, trained by Mark Cassinini out of Hammer's Gym. With an official weight, 63.2 kilograms. We're in the yellow trunks with black piping. He has a Muay Thai kickboxing record of 31 fights, 30 wins, one draw, six coming by way of knockout. A professional boxing record of three fights, two wins, one draw. This man is undefeated, fighting out of Collingwood right here in Victoria. He is the WMC lightweight Australian champion and the glory four-man tournament champion. He is the showstopper, the main eventer, the Filipino flash, River. Jazz! River. Fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room, okay? I want a clean fight. Obey what I say at all times and defend yourselves at all times. When I say break, stop punching and step back cleanly. Touch close now, back to your corners. Good luck. Don't worry about opening the gyms. Somebody opened up the hairdressers. I think River's had a home haircut job. <laughs> I think you could be right. Mouth guard in. It's a six-round fight. Uh, really Timing. excited to see this. Fox. Yeah, we should see fireworks here. Hunter's danger punch, his power punch is generally his overhand right. River's got a cross-fight sports. He's got an excellent eye, really, really good hand speed. Um, and he's just one of those kids that just knows how to win and ha how to fight and how to win. It's, he's just got that quality. I've seen him trailing fights and come back and just get the job done. Okay. They're moving nicely in the opening seconds of the first round. I like the way River's stance is. Nice and chin tucked down, nice and side on. Both fighters just taking their time. Sizing each other up. And Hunter's got his hands down there, Barry. Very it's low. It, it, look, believe me, I've seen it bring him undone before. Um, anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Rivers, you know, not letting, letting them go at the moment. He's got to work his timing out, but Hunter's very relaxed indeed. Nice little jabs from River Dads there. Both boys, you know, not uh, really landing their shots. The range is not uh, on the money at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, I'd just be interested to see how River's uh, adjusting to the um, fighting range difference between Thai boxing and boxing within a few weeks. For sure. Big change. Actually landed some uh, good clean jabs there, Hunter, but it just hit a right hand over the top of that last one. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, both boys just feeling each other out, but uh, River's the tighter of the two with his defense, and I mean, Hunter very loose at the moment. for sponsoring tonight's fight. Good jab from Hunter. Warriors way locked down to coming to you live on Fox Sports. Yeah, he's landed that jab actually a few times nice and close. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, going out okay this round. He hasn't unleashed his power yet. Time! But uh, you think End of round probably one. just about pinched that first round, Hunter. Not a lot in it, though, actually, to be honest. River had a few, you know, land a few good jabs. Pretty tame round, really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, and River just the more the sort of classic boxing stance and posture. Just yeah. very uh, tidy work. Yeah, hands yep. in the right position. Barry, when you get a guy that's got that natural power that uh, Hunter does, and he... You know, he, you know, he tries to fight quite unorthodox. How do, you, how do you work with someone like that? Do you try to maul them 
get the, the hand position and stuff back to something a little bit more orthodox, or do you just try to do your best to work with what they've got? You've got to be cautious, you know, if you're, you're fighting a big puncher, you've certainly got to be cautious and, uh, and you know, try and work out a way to nullify their power, whether that be by, you know, beating them to the punch or smothering them or whatever. But certainly, Fox. you know, some guys have got incredible power. Yeah. Hunt is active with that jab. Oh, oh, returning oh, fire. Oh, it's certainly heating up this round. Good right hand back from River. Good counter. A little bit south of the border that that body shot. Good uppercuts by River and yeah. lovely evasion. Good shots from River Daz there. Keep Good body up. shot from Hunter. Nice left rip to the body. I'd like to see him do more of that. One thing when we did have him for a few weeks, we started to work on his uh, body punching, but we didn't have him long enough. He moved on. Not too many. Better people to learn that from uh, <laughs> than yourself, Barry. Yeah, it was, uh, it was my forte, that's for sure. And you know, it's a, as I said, it's a dying art body, don't you? Watch the heads. a bit low, south of the border, Hunter. Oh, love a cut there. Beautiful timing. Another nice short right hand. Good stuff from River there. And another right hand, three, four. Good punches there. Very clean shots from River Daz. Just want him to not get too carried away in these early rounds, though. Hunter throwing bombs. Wonder what River looked around. Oh, beautiful right hand, River. Both boys, you know, landing some clean big shots this round. Hard punches. Good body shot from River Daz there. Good left the grip of the body. Nice jab, but Hunter counter straight away. Excellent bout so far. You know. Lovely shot. Yeah. Left there from Hunter. Yeah. That one load him. Keep him oh, up, Hunter. Keep him up. Oh, I think uh, Rivers had a couple of low kicks hiding in that in his <laughs> career, my entire career. <laughs> they were well south of the border. Do it again, I'll warn you. Box. Nice right there from River. Yeah. Yeah. And again. Good. Good countering shot there from River Daz, boxing nicely. Ooh, he landed that up a, uh, uppercut once earlier. Missed with it there. Time. Interesting round, pretty seesawing round. Good, but good, some good solid shots there by River Barry. Very, uh, some really good combos. You know, some really good combos from River. But you know, both boys had their moments. Um, be interested to see the way the judges scored it. That was a bit low there, like you said, Jed. Well, there's a couple of much lower than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nice uppercut that, there from River Dad. And another right hand. That was beautiful stuff. It was very good. I feel like that's where Hunter keeps getting caught. He throws his jab and then just stops and looks at what, what happens after. They will look at that. That was five punches there from River. Look. Evades and steps back and then counters again. Good work. But got caught there. Interesting bout we've got in our hands at the moment. Very good stuff. There we go. Oh! <laughs> I knew he got him in the knee. Left hook to the <laughs> IT band. <laughs> Seconds out. Uh. Hi, sorry. Fox. Here we go, the third of six rounds. This round's brought to you by Beast, Jim. Massive supporters of the um, tonight show, both with the number of fighters they put on and sponsorship. Bowie and the team, absolute legends. Great to see. Both boys certainly warming to the task now. Let's see if we have a... Oh, yeah. beautiful flurry there from River. Yeah, lovely punches in bunches. That's what he needs to do. Same as Hunter. There's that dangerous right hand. He's got awesome power. And there it is again. There it is again. Three big right hands from Hunter. 
The only. River barely flinches and comes back. Now he takes a shot well. Don't hold. River tries a big overhand right. Don't hold, boys. Watch it. On the back foot a bit here. You think he did the aggressive at oh, good touches there from River Daz. Both fighters moving really well. Yeah, it's a, it's a seesawing battle. There's not a lot between them. What was that about? The Billy Saunders, where did that punch go move? <laughs> I think we've seen oh, that enough. Oh, oh he hurt Hunter. Uppercut right hand over Don't the top. Hold. Beautiful Don't timing hold. from Riverdale Don't there. Hunter lo unloads big shot to the body. Don't hold. Don't hold. Right. That was lovely bit of work by River. What Under that? and over. Yeah. Keep him up, Hunter. Keep him up. <laughs> yep. Good stuff. Nice right hand there from River Daz. Good jab, good counter. Block the right hand well. Walks back up again. Keep him up, Hunter. The referee keeps warning Hunter. Yeah, one Don't more and he'll lose break. points. Don't push down on me, Hunter. Great bit of boxing action back on Fox Sports tonight. Real good fight. Both boys having their moments. As always, River's having a ball in centre ring. He always enjoys himself, doesn't he? He does, he does. And uh, if you catch up with River and have a chat with him, you would never, never imagine that he's this quality of fighter. Oh, there's the big right hand from Hunter. Right. Step back clean. He's always dangerous, isn't he? He's, do Time. he's always dangerous with that right hand. Really good round. They're very, you know, seesawing. Both boys are having their moments. We'll go to the replay. River throwing lots and lots of punches. Not all of them. Missing with them all there, though. Nice body shot there from Hunter and that big right hand. Got counted. Plenty. Good exchange there. That was Hunter. three, wasn't it? Oh. Hunter's head evasion improved, I believe. Making a lot of shots miss, but wildly missing there. Good guy. Oh, lovely. No. Oh, they were beautiful. That shots. really rocked him. Yeah, look, look. He really wobbled him there. Perfect uppercut. <laughs> What Seconds a fantastic out. boxing match. Yeah, this is really good corner, work. Give the floor a white. Class work. Box. Hunter's just absolutely warring away with that left jab. Yeah, but River's, you know, evading the jab well, countering well. Look at that. Beautiful. Just straight down the pipe. Yep. Beautiful good combination counter. there. Yeah, good counter punching there from River Daz. Hunter not being effective so far this round. Oh. Great head movement there from River. Yeah, lands three shots and moved. Yeah, definitely a good contest between these two. Um, you know, this would be good over a 10 round yeah. distance for sure. Good clean shots there from River Daz. Hunter looking very casual. River the more Don't accurate hold. of the two. Don't hold. With his Break. punches. Up. 
just good evasion, just out of out of reach, and then pops back. Yeah, both boys are showing some skills. You know, good countering, good, good, uh, good punching. Hunter really trying to put the pressure on there, but River moves away nicely. Left, left, right hand, another jab. And a jab again. Jab's a real good good punch for River Dad. He's got a lovely short jab. It's caught there, big punches. Don't hold. Break. Oh. First warning, you punch from break. When I say break, you stop punching. First warning. Box. Mm. I tell you, he's, he's had a couple of warnings for low punch. Oh, that right up oh, and right hand that. again. Yeah, good punches from River Dad's there. He's shaking his head. His defence certainly hasn't improved, that's for sure. He's still copying a lot of shots. Look at that. Yeah. Pops his jab and the hand comes down low and the head doesn't move. Yeah. Nice left hook, little left hook there from River Daz. Getting on top of this fight. Yeah, an official scorecard with his cleaner shots. How do you see it, fellas? Uh, it's River for me at the moment, but I've got to yeah. be careful. River's a mate and he's <laughs> fought for me a lot, but uh, for me, so far, he's landing the cleanest shots, making yeah. him miss more. And There's not a lot in it, but yeah. he, I think you're right. He's, uh, you know, his uh, percentage of clean shots are better, you know. But there's that big right hand. Hunter. Hunter's always dangerous. And that's, that's what River's got to do. Like, he, he might be able to outbox him, he might be able to outscore him, but he's got to be careful if he doesn't get caught with that power oh, that sure. Hunter's got. But, I tell you what, River Daz is such a sportsman, he's such a showman. Yeah, he's boxing beautifully. Hey, look at that, that's brilliant work. Jab, jab, right hand, move. Nice tight defense from River Daz. I'd like to see Hunter have a defense like that to make him much, a much better fighter. Seconds out. Good work there from Hunter, though. Yeah, he does have good success when he goes to the body, doesn't he? And yep. When he Box. does do. When he keeps it to the body. When he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put higher than most of those shots. Okay, round five, isn't it? Five of six. <laughs> you hear that in the corner? You know the right hand's coming. Mm. <laughs> there it is. He misses by a mile. But that's the one that will do the damage if he lands it. Hunter, uh, by memory, is half Japanese, half Samoan. Is he really? Yeah. What a combination. He's mother Japanese. Oh, Thomas is got half Persian, half Samoan, Nick, eh? Almost. Almost. Oh, keep him up, Hunter. <laughs> Break! Step back, clean. Oh. Lovely little exchange there between the boys. Yeah, River looking pretty confident here. Hunter's. Look at that. Oh, oh. Lord. Nice, lovely, lovely combination there. River getting on top here. Boxing well, moving well. La you know, landing good, good punches and then getting away. Smart, smart boxing. Really good ring work, you're right, yeah. Barry. Absolutely. And Hunter getting more and more. Uh, Don't punch. You know, wild, I think, you know, not missing with his shots. Don't hold. Break. Step back, Glenn. Second warning. Oh. I called break. You punched again. Second warning. Box. Yeah. Hunter, oh, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. And moves. You're picking Hunter apart this round. Don't hold. Nice ride. River's just staying really disciplined and tidy. Yes. Trying to shorter, tighter shots. Oh, good left hook from Hunter today. Oh, lovely right hand from River Daz. Yeah, good fight this. We've got a really good fight. Both boys having success at times with the cleaner stuff coming from River Daz. You wouldn't know that this isn't River, River's primary uh, martial art. Yeah. Nice left 
left, right again. He's good, good with that double jab right hand. He's cautious of Hunter's power still, though. Which yeah. is fair enough. Good discipline, and I yeah. think that's been hammered into him. Yep. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> hammered him yeah. during yeah. training. <laughs> and which gym does he go to? <laughs> <laughs> he hammers 24 7 in Nunawadding. <laughs> Break. Step back. Time. End yep. of round five. What a fantastic, no, another fantastic round. This has been absolutely fantastic. Quality Sensational fight. fight. Yeah, quality fight. There's that massive overhand fight by Hunter. Missed by it. Look at that. He got caught himself. He's always dangerous. This again. Yeah, and there he goes. Counted again. Yeah, yep. get, getting out pointed clearly here. That's what it's all about. Hit and not be hit. Oh, lovely, lovely time. And another one over Four the shots. Four, four beautiful clean shots there. Good boxing. That's what it's all about. A lot of people don't like him, but the greatest master was the great Floyd Mayweather. He certainly never got hit. People don't realise how good he was to come back at 38 and beat Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, yeah. It took him to school. Incredible. Second I kicked down. him in at 19 at the Atlanta Olympics, the best fighter this I saw there. It was the last time he ever got beat. Sixth and, and final, final round. round. Great fight. Fox. We're coming to you live from Warriors Way, Lockdown 2. Thank you to Fox Sports. Thank you to all of our sponsors. It's been an absolutely cracker night here. Hunt. Here goes Hunter hunting down yeah. River Daz. He has to hunt River Daz down. Fox. He's been told by the corner for sure that he's behind on points. He's coming out, putting on the pressure in a big way which is what he needs to do. He needs to let his hands go and he needs to land big punches, but a beautiful left right there from River Daz as he moves. Hit and move. Hit and not be hit. No beautiful turn by River. Yeah. Break! Don't punch. Oh. Don't push down. And just graze Hunter's chin. Fighters oh. showing so much spirit. Yeah, Hunter's certainly got heart and power. He just needs to sharpen up his boxing skills. He's been ticked off by a very good technician here in Bay. Yeah, who's doing really good basics just really well yeah. at all time. That'll right hand. Right he right right boxes beautiful. Yeah. He's tight, defensive tight. Look at that beautiful right hand. Beautiful Don't hold. stuff. Don't hold. Work it. Got about a minute and a half to go, maybe. I think Hunter's just trying to bait him a little oh, bit. Oh, lovely uppercut from River Daz. He makes Hunter miss and count as well. Oh, beautiful power from both fighters. Don't hold. Keep him up, Hunter. <laughs> Keep him up, Hunter. He's lucky not to have lost points. <laughs> he really is. Don't hold. Don't hold. Work out of it. Both boys feeling the pinch now, I think. Hunter walking up, needs to land a bomb. Otherwise, he's going to lose this on points. Don't hold, Hunter. That's good. Very lovely, work. Work. lovely work by River. There he's getting more confident, as you're seeing, Barry. Sticks the jab Don't out. And when in work doubt, stick the jab out. And he does that beautifully. There's that jab again, look. Final, Final 30 look. seconds. Here we go, down to the wire, ladies and gentlemen. Hunter's got to go for it. I mean, Slipping away, he needs a knockout, it's not going to happen, I can tell you. Good shot, good shots from River Daz. Ten seconds. Don't stop. Oh, left. Oh, beautiful left there. Another left one again. Deep left there from Hunter and it's all over. Great work, great, what a fight. What a great main event. Really good fight. Yep, River Daz wins this well. It's the better boxer on the night, that's for sure. He's back better. in the action in the last round. Better technically good. You can see the power there in that left hook, but River Daz, very tight defense. You know, basic box, beautiful basic boxing skills. That's, that's what wins fights. Lovely, look at that. Yep. 
brilliant display of boxing from River Daz. Nice short right there. Crushing right there from River Daz. Yeah, and Hunter loaded up that right hand with everything he had left. That was gorgeous too. He tried to pull back on the rope and tried to bait River, and River knew what was coming and just pulled back in that right uppercut. Yeah, he's got good boxing IQ, River Daz. I'm quite impressed with what I've seen tonight. You'll, uh, Barry, you'll have to come back December 4th and watch him fight Muay Thai. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be good. I'd love to see him. He's got an incredible Muay Thai record, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go to the judges' scorecards. We think we know where it's at, though. And our main event here at Warriors, way locked down too. I don't think there's much doubt. You know, I think uh, John in the corner would know that Hunter hasn't won this fight. I think Hunter would probably know the same. Put up a great fight as he always does. Six rounds of action. We've gone to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scored the contest 58 56. Hunter, your second judge scored the contest 58 56. Daz, your third and deciding judge scored the contest 59 55. Declaring your winner via split points decision. Red corner, the Filipino flash. River Daz! And I thought the heck River, was bad. River, we'll a quick one to both fighters. <laughs> Hunter, first of all, welcome to Centering. Welcome to Lockdown 2.0. Great to have you on the show. How are you feeling, brother? Uh, first of all, I just want to say to say thanks to my God, my Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for everything that you've done in my, done in my career. Uh, he made me who I am today, and I'm truly grateful to have a, a wonderful God that, that blessed me with everything. So, and second of all, I just want to say thanks to my corner for everything. Um, it is, it wasn't our night tonight, but it is what it is. We, we move forward and, uh, and um, yeah, we learn from it. So, it is what it is. So, uh, good on uh, on Dan for the win. Thanks, Hammer, for having me on the show. Uh, thanks to everyone for, for coming tonight and my team, the Peace. The beast team and thanks to to the boys there uh, pbs for letting me having a day off and uh focus on training and stuff like that um to my family back home to my mom and dad the sito family uh back and they're watching from home uh, i love you all and i can't wait to get home and and have some fee and and celebrate with everyone um it is what it is it is not our night tonight but i'm truly grateful to be here and i uh, thank god for everything and uh, thanks to all my mates for supporting me, um, Sharon and uh, Angelo for coming by and drop off their present and stuff like that. Um, thanks to all the Peace team, E-Man, if there whoever is at E-Man's house uh, watching, I love you all. It wasn't our night tonight. Uh, we learned from that, we move forward, and we come back stronger. So thanks everyone for coming tonight. <laughs> Truly grateful. No matter very few words, Hunter Yoni, <laughs> River Jazz. Man, the transition, Muay Thai kickboxing into boxing. I'm not going to say Filipinos are good boxers, but <laughs> Filipinos are good boxers. <laughs> was there a question? <laughs> there wasn't a question. <laughs> <laughs> River Daz, love having you in centering, mate. You are making a habit of fighting in lockdown events. Only a few weeks ago at uh, the last show at our Roots and today, Warrior's Way. Um, yeah, look, to be honest, I'm just really grateful to be doing what I'm doing again. It was two, three, two to three years off from not competing, so just thank you, Hammer especially, you know, he's keeping the sport alive, he's, he's keeping the sport alive, um, and just doing it for the community, so I'm, I'm truly grateful to him, truly grateful to the team, and uh, thank you, thank you to everyone who came down, thank you to everyone who, who watched the show and paid, uh, I really appreciate it, because without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this, and that's, again, we're doing it for you guys. Um, thank you to my family, 
Thank you to my friends. Thank you to everyone who's supporting. And especially thank you to my team. I love you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're victor of our Warriors Way main event, the Filipino Flash, Rivadas. What a night it's been, a lockdown 2.0. A big thanks to the team at Warriors Way. A massive thanks to everyone watching at home. Until next time, stay safe in Melbourne. We will be back and we'll see you right back here in the Warriors Way ring. Good night. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What a mega evening it's been at Warriors Way Lockdown 2. It has been action upon action. Daniel Chen, had... Steve Morales. We've Taking been... the wins. What a great effort. We've seen everything tonight. It's been a really good night of boxing. The girls Michelle going Russell up. versus yeah. Nicola Rigoni taking the big win. Excellent win there. Mick Hannafy and, of course, Sashi Frederick. Oh. Incredible heart to get up from that. Matthew Walker taking it away against Romeo at Pounds. Fantastic, well-deserved win. Adam Copeland just too strong for Tim Davies, taking away the win there. Very and of fun. course, the main event of the evening, River Daz, just absolutely pummeling Hunter Aoni. Great master class of boxing there from River Daz. Uh, one judge actually had Hunter winning, which is you know, a bit strange, but I, you know, I mean, Hunter's always dangerous, as I said, but he didn't deserve to win this one. He lost clearly on points, I thought. And a big shout out to the Shellian Broadcasting Group. Good night from Sai Naji, Mr. Barry Michael, and my name's Nicholas Mara. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.